Hey everyone, this is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and thanks for joining us today on our latest episode, which you can infer from the title, of course, is all about nukes and nuclear warfare. And I think this might be our best episode ever. This is a very special episode, probably the best ever. Of course, I say that about every episode, but I really do think this is a great episode. And the reason why is because I think there's a really nice balance here between the more philosophical discussions on living in a world of constant threat of nuclear warfare versus other types of war, and then getting into you know other related ideas about nuclear energy and that sort of thing. So there's really a widespread here, I think, for anybody interested in this type of topic. And of course, it gets entertaining the more we go on in the episode, because if you are joining us for the first time, you should know that we also discuss craft beer, usually at the beginning of the episodes. But obviously, as we continue over the course of the episode, that becomes a factor. So we get into some interesting territory in terms of our ideas uh, getting a little off the rails. So it's it's a fun time overall. I think if you're at all interested in this topic in its broader sense, you'll you'll have a good time and you might even learn a thing or two because we certainly did doing the research that we did. So a couple other things I just want to mention very quickly before we dive in. You can check out our new blog that we have. That's at thunktankpodcast.wordpress.com. And what we do there is we post just a little more content writing about the topics that we discuss each episode. So if you want to hear a little bit more about what we have to say and want to comment yourselves and have a discussion with us, you can certainly check us out there. You know, we always encourage you to uh, share your, your thoughts and your feedback as well. And that goes for as well, if you have any ideas for future episodes that you might like us to do uh, about topics that you might like us to cover, you know, feel free to comment here or on our YouTube videos, there's links in the descriptions below, or you can email us directly at thunktankpodcast at gmail.com. And of course, lastly, very special thanks to our Patreon fans. Our Patreon subscribers are what keep the proverbial lights on here. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It's basically a website where you can support us um, and we offer you bonus content. So of course, all our episodes are free, but if you want access to further bonus material, definitely check us out there. There's some really good bonus material, I can promise you that, and uh, you can probably tell that just from the preview I've posted there, hopefully. So, But yeah, that's all for now. I hope you guys have a great time, and uh, enjoy the podcast. We'll see you there. Attention humans, this is a thunk tank. Please insert this podcast directly into your nearest orifice for viewing pleasure. Okay, you ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Welcome, to, come into our, come into our Thunk Tank. <laughs> Luke, don't switch <laughs> to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. <laughs> We're thinking, and we're thinking, <laughs> and we're thunked, and we're thunked. Oh my god, I'm probably more beer than man if we go far enough back at this point. I just want to turn it into like a... Well, wasn't that what Einstein said too? World War Three will be fought with nukes, World War Four, four will be fought with sticks and stones. Yeah. Kind of, kind Which, of yeah, a sim- he, he similar did. sentiment. Yeah, but he died before the, like you know those the hydrogen bomb arms race really got off. So he yeah, but he knew where he was going. Yeah, he didn't think that you know if we had a nuclear war now they just crack that mantle open. Um, <laughs> did you start recording, Luke? All right, ready, set, go. All right, let's yeah. just start and we'll do a fade in. I, 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 I the, the, this quote's bugging me out, dude. Yeah. I'm not ready for it. It's going. It's an Oppenheimer quote. I don't care if it's going. I'm not ready for the quote. Oh, so I, welcome to Thunk Tank Podcast. <laughs> welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, this is our, uh, are we doing this episode on, on, on nuclear warfare? Is that what's well, happening? Well, he said it, so we're doing it, folks. <laughs> welcome. Why is this the topic? Uh, we have about 12 PhDs in the room to discuss the issue. I think uh, we we'll have bring um, them in as, as uh, needed. We have 12 levels of pH of beer, I think is what you meant. Oh, did I say PhDs? I meant yeah. I have 12 pictures you, you of a guy close. named Phil, I know. I mispronounced <laughs> Phil. So not only is um, this sorry. a late night version of, of the cast, it's also a bizarro version. 
Well, yeah, because of the time zone difference, because half of us are, are, are out of state right now, and that gets a little wonky, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Luke's Joe's the, uh, down, satellite down cast. Uh, at Genie headquarters currently. I'm at Genie headquarters down Genie south. HQ, baby. Yeah, our, our Thunk Tank podcast division down south, and, and Luke's back up at our main studio up north. Our northeast branch. No, yeah, I'm not in your room, branch. though, Joe. Luke, you just totally shattered the entire fourth Come wall. On, we just you said just, that it was a studio. You just hulked your way through it, dude. Fuck. <laughs> no, well done. It's it's impressive. Yeah. It's hard to do in one sentence. <laughs> um, now, this is uh, unique because uh, in two weeks, we're going to reverse the Bizarro so that I'm going to be with Johnny and Joe's going to be alone. You know, one of these weeks we'll yeah. we'll get all into one room. I just don't we know. Really, that that, that when has or to how be like or why a, it's going to happen. A, a, an amazing I don't think event it, when that happens. Like, I don't think it will happen. Is well, there I think some kind of law in the universe <laughs> against it? No, we ju- we just need that hundred dollar an episode Patreon subscriber to fly us all to the same location. So, Joe, <laughs> how's, how's your how's your few days at at Johnny Genie headquarters been so far? M- well, you know, I've do- I've been doing a lot of research for you know for the podcast because I'm here and and that's what this is really all about. That's what I'm down here. That's what I'm doing. Fact um, finding. Yeah, no, I've drank more beers than hours I think since I've been here. So yeah, that's that really counts, what I was right? getting at. Yeah, yeah, that that certainly um, counts as re- research. Yeah. My my um, real question is: Should we make one of the Patreon rewards of spending uh, a few days at Johnny Genie headquarters? Uh, you would need to be at least a hundred dollars an episode, right? What, what's what's hotel yeah, rates? How about I volunteer strangers to live at Luke's house? <laughs> too? Let's do that, guys. <laughs> well, there's already a couple a couple of shadow. Where, I think there's one where I think it's a hundred dollars an episode where you come on the podcast. You get to join. I the may podcast. or may not already be living with one of our higher Patreon <laughs> uh, contributors all, already. Right. So, uh, and by may or may not it be, it could yes. happen, guys. It could happen if you yeah. want. Sign up. So, um, so let's start with what beer we're drinking. Uh, we have yeah, a topic yeah, that's, a that's certainly very interesting today, but it's also it's very easy to get sucked into the dark side of it. So let's try to stay away from that as, as much as we can. Yeah. And it's easy to derail hard, which I feel like is inevitable. Is, is, is going to happen. Such is the way of apocalyptic warfare. All right. So what are you drinking, Luke? So um, I did forget to swing by the beer store today before it closed to get something really good. So I got my classic... Uh, uh, 7-Eleven Tall Boy of Sierra Nevada, and I also have Little Something nice. Something. Lagunitas. Classic, yeah. That's like nice. my go-to grocery store beer if like I, I don't have any good craft beer around, you know? Lagunitas, mm. uh, they, they put out good stuff, man. I are they still independent, or are they uh, InBev? Aren't we all InBev at this that, point? Uh, pretty, at some point. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I think point. I might be InBev, too. I, it's hard to say. You're at least like 2% InBev by this yeah, point. Yeah, I think the holding company that was... Johnny got bought by InBev, and I just didn't notice. Right. Um, yeah, that's how they get you. They, they go behind your back. How about you guys? Your what son. are you drinking? I'm drinking some sort of turmeric beer. Oh, jo- yeah, oh jo- fuck, I forgot we didn't record that part. Jo- <laughs> <laughs> Joe's just drinking a very pretentious sounding. Yeah, uh, we were arguing over the pronunciation of, uh, is it turmeric or turmeric? But yeah. it's, it's a... It's a that word kind of flavored uh, turmeric. But Wait, I, I is one of those bottle, like the actually, cunty way to say that word and one like the we, okay we, way? We think, but we don't, we're not sure which is which. You know, like well, if somebody I mean, says a word like purposely like, oh, like, Barcelona. Say, wait, I want to see if he's <laughs> papier mache. I thought you were going to say, because the one that we came up with was like, you wouldn't say to somebody like, oh, I'm eating a tomato versus like, if you were being pretentious, you'd say, I'm eating a tomato. Right. Oh, the tomato garden. Yeah. You know. At Barcelona. It's almost like just Barcelona. putting a sign on your head and saying, I'm a fucking Barcelona. asshole. When you like make a point to uh, pronounce difficult things perfectly you know you're better off wearing a sign that says i'm an asshole and then just saying barcelona normally right i mean it I is mean, a true I, thing. I the lisp from that kind of uh, spanish accent i've heard it was a king who had a speech impediment that that really? people started speaking like that so the king didn't feel like different and feel bad about his like speech oh, that's up. funny oh that's interesting but it, it's hmm. it's still like a weird thing because it would be like if somebody came to visit yes, me. Yes, from- you must speak like the inbred <laughs> royalty. You must speak like your grandparents are all cousins, fuck of. I like how you sound like inbred, like French royal Jar Jar Binks. Pretty much what I, I assume ruled Europe for like 400 years straight, right? But it is ridiculous, though, because it would be like if somebody came to visit me from down south and they were like, yeah, how y'all doing? I, I'm really enjoying the bagels and coffee you have yeah, up here. Yeah, he'd be like, don't say 
it like I we think, think we yeah, say. Like, Just say it the way you say. Please it. never do that again yeah. or before when you did it. That would but, be great. So, anyways, he's drinking. Uh, it's from Fonta Flora is the brewery. Oh, you actually? Oh, I know, know that it. brewery. Yeah. It's an nice. awesome brewery in Morganton, North Carolina. Hell yeah! A uh, cool little farmhouse brewery, which may or not may not be where we are. Yeah, may not may or not be in the same state. Oh, good uh, the fuck luck and, with all that shit. Like, at, there may have been like a time where. Where um, <laughs> no, no, people they didn't know, know our names or where we live, nah, but that's long gone. Dude, why are we trying to be so incognito? Have you read? Have you read our, our user agreement, like, Johnny? No, <laughs> I'm gonna write I a user agreement. <laughs> I didn't know we had one. Hey guys, if I, I put my legs to. up, am I putting my crotch right in the camera? Let's find out, baby. Yeah, go for it. Um, no, not too bad. All right, I, I can I can feel the essence of your crotch, but I don't see it. Which yeah, I am a little triggered, but yeah, yeah a little bit. But um, no more than normally, right? I mean, so it's it's a, it's a turmeric IPA, turmeric and black peppercorn IPA. Oh, or is that some, is some that kind what of that peppercorn? Is? Yeah, black so peppercorn. Some okay, spi- some spices cool. in there. Uh, and yeah. I love peppercorn. There's another great beer from Haw River. The other Haw best River farmhouse, yeah, like brewery, Haw Haw H A W, okay. the Haw River, Haw River, Carolina, in North Carolina. Don't don't go in the Haw River. Uh, is it just but, polluted? I, yeah, just don't don't go in it. Have you peed in it? No, 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 no. But uh, Coke Industries dumped a bunch of coal ash, so don't. Go you mean in like Coca Cola or just like Coke heads? No, like K O C H, the billionaire guys, the Coke brothers. Oh, Coke brothers. Yeah, okay. they, they they dumped a bunch of coal. Uh, I mean, allegedly, I'm pretty sure they got. Yeah, off Johnny, on don't those get us demonetized from ourselves. No, no, I, I love brothers. I love the uh, the corporate masters. Anyways, <laughs> so if you're just oh, joining they, us, they, <laughs> the reason I brought up Hall River is uh, they make a farmhouse beer. Called the Seven Faces of Pepe Grano, which I just love the name. But they use seven different peppercorns, nice. and it's just super Decent. peppery. Uh, but that's what Joe's drinking. I'm drinking a brand new beer from Foothills Brewing down in Winston Salem, North Carolina. Yeah, let me called, try this shit. Uh, Tangled Vine Berry Rose. Oh, I was drinking this and at the bar, got, wasn't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's got cranberries, sour cherries, and strawberries. So they don't do sours, but they did like a tart. Fruit well, the ale. sour cherry comes across as a sour, or it makes it gives it that sour beer vibe. Yeah, but it doesn't sure. have that like mouth puckering. Yeah, like, vomit. Yeah, yeah, taste yeah, that to kind it. of baby vomit uh, <laughs> flavor you can get with some sours. A little bit. I sometimes. guess baby vomit's yeah. one thing that people have actually tasted because babies tend to like spit up their vomit right when they're, you're holding it. You know what's funny about that is my friend has like a two year old now, and for like the first year, basically her posts on Facebook were about how her baby was throwing up in her mouth. Like yeah, not no, only half ironically, it. like that also happened a bunch. You know, um, dogs don't do that. I, I, yeah, I don't think it has to happen a lot. <laughs> I think it's just some one of those things you don't forget. But no, a uh, baby vomit is a specific off flavor. Is, uh, is that from a, from is, in beer? Is uh, that a craft brew you're working on, baby vomit? It's butyric okay. acid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That all those off flavors, like um, they're they're Some just fatty you acid. learn like the clues of of um, not only obviously the, oh the beer got fucked up, but how it got fucked up in the brewing process, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't there makes one like, yeah. that taste makes it taste Checks like band aids or something? Yeah, <laughs> band aid adhesive. That's one. Uh, what? Dentist. Glove is one. Wait, is this the, like what the beers are called? No, these are actual flavor descriptors. Horse blanket is is considered Horse a po- blanket. like a positive one for uh, Brett beers. Have you ever had a farmhouse beer that tastes like the inside of a barn? Oh, yes. there's one. Yes. There's one. Yeah. That, there's one. I kind of like it. There's one that um, <laughs> Barrier just came out with Barrier Brewing in Brooklyn, and the only way I can describe it is like as, and I'll quote myself: "Hot barn foot." <laughs> Hot barn foot. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, it's that's, just like hay, like hay and sweaty and like... that. That's probably a, a, a sour. Sunlit. No, it's. I think it's, a, it's an IPA. It's just... It tastes like hot barn foot. Uh, it's not bad. It's just... You so know, it's, what yeah, it is. it's an acid formed by the bacteria that causes the souring sometimes. And uh, yeah, it can ruin your beer and make it taste like baby vomit. So this is not a baby vomit beer. Though. That's why we brought up the baby. The There's baby your quote beer. out of context, ladies and gentlemen. It, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just like a tart, almost soured, uh, not really sour. Uh, right on. A, not really a sour fruit beer. But nice. It's really light, like 4%. I like it. We also have a refreshing. giant bottle of something on deck here. Oh, yeah, I got another. What is this? Got, speaking of farmhouse beers, yeah. kind of a random theme. Um uh, Let's go with because when the nukes come, there'll only be a couple of farmhouses left because they're going to take the cities out. That's that's, why that's the theme tonight. Uh, yeah. I got some Jester King beer here, uh, an nice. old beer with smoked malts, and they're really crazy, 
good brewery out in Texas. Johnny, I that, forget uh, if I ever told you about cool the shit. Jester King thing. Um, did you hear that the the one of the bre- head brewers there or something uh, was uh, about to sell one of their biggest releases and um, was doing a test taste uh, and decided to throw the a whole batch taste. out? Oh no! I didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. I did hear that. It was like an it, you know intense decision with the amount of money that they would be losing. Yeah, because not only do you lose the money you put into it, but you are counting on making the money from the sales. You know? Exactly. That's the a shame. Yeah. And That's the time. Really expensive you, you spent all that time with your tanks that now they didn't make you any money in that time. Wow. All right, That's so a shame. That's this, a crying this shame. This was sort of like um, how we danced around our, our politics episode. Uh, so I'm going to throw the question at you, Johnny, because you're the one that brought up uh, nuclear weapons as like a good topic. So why do you want to do it? Uh, cause I was thinking about it. I had a discussion with someone we were talking about, cause there's like a, cl- there's a few classic philosophical questions. You know, you, you hear like the fat man on the train tracks one, like, uh, philosoph- philo- philosophical and ethical questions. And one I always remember from like high school. And when I talked to teachers and young people, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we, we, we did that one is the, uh, atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Because that was the beginning mm. of the atomic sure. age, 1945, right? Yeah. Talk about a terrifyingly uh, tangible hype, like or moral question, right? Where right? it's like, what is the better option? Like, do you do it or you do, like do you yeah. don't? What do you do instead? The ethics you know? of using it, the ethics yeah. of using it, and not knowing what it would do, really. Like they did, they weren't sure if it would have destroyed all of Japan. You know like, what's crazy? Were, one theory uh, was that they thought no, they tested set, it. Yeah, but one of the theories was Once. they thought. Yeah, yeah. But they, they thought the actual payload from the bomb would be so explosive that it might set the atmosphere on fire. Like they didn't know. They're like, oh, what if they are, like the atmosphere just ignites? Like, you know, uh, I think what they, I think what they off. knew. If you watch like the test bombings and then like you watch or you you like listen to the people involved, it it seems to me like they were thinking, yeah, this will do the job. Like this will do the trick. So, yeah, we'll, I they'll mean, see this and just be like, all right, so we're let out. Me throw which is what happened. Back at you, Luke. Do you, what do you think about the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Do you think they were like justified or not? So basically, this, would you make that call? So um, I thought about it from a few different angles today, like about making that call, so to speak. Uh, one angle is. Um, if you fast forward to like the Cold War type era, you had the mutually assured destruction. So Mad. the concept would be like you're on a submarine. Let's sit, pick whatever country you're for, right? And you have a protocol, which is as soon as you lose contact in a certain way with, with the motherland, then uh, your job is to just launch, right? Is, uh, that, is that the protocol? Well, the protocol is like... Um, uh, I, I mean, every uh, diff- there's different protocol. I know in the case of the uh, UK that each new prime minister writes a specific letter with instructions to the heads of the nuclear submarines. Mm-hmm. And so it, it kind of gives the instructions. But I was listening to a few interviews today, and most of the people said, yeah, the orders are technically that if everything is destroyed, then we, we launch everything. But th- that... But also, they said I wouldn't do it. How do you know what's destroyed? Well, that's actually oh, I should have looked this up. There was this guy in the Soviet Union. I forget his name. I'll definitely find it and link it in the episode description. I know who you're but talking about. Yeah. You know? Do you know his name? Uh, I can I can find it real quick while you're just introduce him. I'll find the name. Yeah, try try to find it because he was this guy at like this random missile base in the Soviet Union, like in the middle of nowhere, and he basically got like a me- like the message to launch the nukes at America. And he was like, okay, well, this is it. Like he realized that this is the, the beginning of the end if I actually launch these nukes. And there were a couple of like kind of signs where like they weren't sure like, oh, could this be an error or not? But like if you strictly follow protocol, it's like, yeah, you're supposed to launch the nukes. And he inevitably made the decision not to do it. Like, he right. decided, like, this, this isn't worth it. I'd rather be, like, court-martialed and, like, you know, whatever the fuck the Soviet Union did to people who disobeyed rather than, like, s- actually start World War Three inadvertently and kill everybody. And it turned out, like, yeah, it was a computer glitch. Like, it was just an error. I and- think I think what it was, it, I, I'm not sure if it was exactly this time, but it ended up being, like, 
um, a very weirdly unique way that sunlight was glittering off of clouds or something. It was, yeah. I think that was it, yeah. So the guy's name we'll, was we'll Stanislav Petrov. Stanislav, yeah. I remember that, yeah. Um, and this happened Great guy. Uh, September 1983. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, pretty late in the Cold War. Yeah. Well, which means that the arsenals were like at their peaks, right? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, who who you, started the... Like It wasn't until the 90s they really started unloading, exactly. you know, breaking down the arsenal. So there were 60,000 like 10, nuclear each, weapons at the peak. 60,000. I think for the record, too, a lot of people have different ideas of maybe like what nuclear weapons might constitute and what they might not. Because the, the one example that is kind of the standard unit of nuclear bomb is basically Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And the only I mean, two times it's been used on people in, in war. war yeah on, on like a civilian population on like a city or something like that right but like those are firecrackers compared to the nukes that came during the cold war yeah the hydrogen like, bombs the czar bomb have hydrogen you seen the czar bomba yeah oh yeah well, well we'll get to the czar bomba hold on you're jumping ahead joe i like it you're excited about the nukes. i, I, I gotta love me but, some czar bomba um, just listen to the name <laughs> but like what you're saying about england luke makes sense in, if like England used to have a huge empire, so they always had to have a big, pretty big army to maintain it. Yeah, uh, which is tough because they're a small or like a big, country, big navy, so they could get yeah. around and cover everything, right? Right. Yeah, you but know? you still or, needed a lot of yeah. people to do that. But and then within the last hundred years, World War Two, like England almost got destroyed. If if you know, it, like Hitler had plans. He had a list of like intellectuals and troublemakers and all these people in English society, like famous people that were like the Gestapo had orders once London f fell, like how to, they were going to mass export like half of the male population to, to work camps in Europe to yeah. like, in like factories. That would have been the so only to, way to, to do build it. the war yeah. machine to conquer like the rest of the world. Yeah. So he like, he had plans to basically turn England into like a prisoner of war camp and, you know, so and they came back and it's like, yeah, now you don't need a big standing army. If you say I have a nuke on a submarine somewhere in the ocean. So if you ever attack us right. like as, with an army, we know where that army's coming from. Like, we'll just like if Germany tries to attack us again, we could just nuke Berlin. Like, yeah. go fuck yourselves. That's, totally. Germany, it's over. Yeah, that's yeah. why they would never attack again. So as a deterrent, it's, you know, it's I know, you know, it's a it makes war a non-starter between well, armed parties. Well, that's, that's the thing. Look, look at how many wars you've had between major nation states since World War Two. None. It's all been like proxy wars. So, yeah, between it's like it's kind of in some ways. Yeah. But yeah, in a weird way, it, it kind of makes um, and the idea of full scale like World War Two style war like stupid, because if it escalates, well, somebody's just going to drop a nuke and then what? We're all going to die. Well, everybody well, starts doing Because the idea that, is yeah. you can't win. Because if you start winning, then they're going to revert to their nukes, and then you lost. And if you start right. to lose, you're just going to lose. So you, there's no way to, you know what I mean? There's no uh, win. But that's like that's part of, this This is why I was talking about this with somebody. Because we're talking about North Korea's nuclear program. Now that they seem to be softening and like recognizing South Korea and stuff, it's a big step. But they also, their nuclear test site, that mountain they tested, they blew it up. It collapsed. So... Like no, they, the, the, Johnny, word, Johnny, they, the North Korean media has told us that's fake news. I mean, of for, course, just the Chinese the reported it. So, yeah. you know. All right. So just so you're clear, yeah. I just want to make sure. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah, so they like it's um, fuck. What was I saying? The nor uh, North, oh, Korean North, North Korea mountain. North Korea. There's a reason Kim Jong uh, Un wants nuclear missiles. It's not to use them. It's because he doesn't want to get overthrown. I mean, you look at yeah. just the last 20 years, you got Saddam. You got Gaddafi. You got uh, uh, Gubarak. Gu Mubarak. Mubarak. Uh, what the fuck was his name? I, I forget. I know who you're talking about, but these are countries that like didn't have nuclear weapons. Syria. Yeah. So you could go in and yeah. Afghanistan. You can go in and topple a regime with tanks well, and planes a, and stuff. Syria is an interesting example, too, because it's like the, the, he's still around that guy, but like his country's just fucked up. And, and he's Bashar okay with that. Yeah, yeah, he's okay with it getting destroyed as long as he stays in power. Which, which, which is, that's shit's been going on for like eight years now. Like, yeah, it's it's crazy. But, yeah. uh, so, but like, so it, it makes sense. It's a very logical. It's not an insane psychotic move for Kim Jong Un to be like, "Get me nukes." It's it's very logical because once I have a nuke, then they have to like deal with me and make treaties and recognize me because I have. I just need like a couple. That's why we have to yeah. deal with like that's why we deal with Pakistan and give them aid, even though they like harbor some terrorists and shit. It's like. 
Well, they fucking a, Bin Laden, dude. I know, but they had a dozen nukes, so it's, no, I know. you can't I'm just invade you. Pakistan. Yeah. So it, it's crazy Yeah, we crazy have to treat the them with world. respect because, like, and, and there's also, it's worth yeah, noting the difference up. between homicidal regimes, which are re- regimes that are, are willing to murder their citizens, and suicidal regimes. That's who you really don't want yes. having nuclear weapons. Right. Yeah. But those are a lot of, like, groups, too, that... It's really scary when they do, like, I I mean, if you look at ISIS as an example, I mean, they sort of were getting close to establishing their own actual country within several countries. And it's like the caliphate. Yeah. I don't know what their end game is. Like their end game might just be to launch nukes. I mean, I think I think if they could, they would do that. No, that's what I mean. Like, like there might be enough crazy fuckers in there you know system in their like strata who would be like oh great we got a nuke like yeah launch it at you know yeah whoever. i mean our yeah th- like global politics seems fucked up and just out of control because it is but you know what would a caliphate with like a sultan that he appoints governors of regions you know how did that work out someone gets a hold of something but the the funny thing is n- people aren't that freaked out about it like public speaking is definitely a higher list of fears than uh, or like a plane crash, things like that, than nuclear right. war. Well, we've, Whereas well, in our parents, in, our, in like the 50s growing up or being a, a citizen, like nuclear war was the biggest threat. But, but everything Matt, else was getting better Matt except has, for that one Matt thing. has mutually assured destruction has been a thing now since like no, the, no, no, the though. 50s. Yeah, but that's... So everyone was no, so I'm saying hyper, it's normalized now. Well, everyone was... Yeah, everyone was so hyper aware of, of it might happen. It could happen any time. Well, it could finally happen. It could finally yeah. happen. You right. know, Russia could do it. But you think about it, back then there were only two players really that might do it, us or right, Russia. Yeah. And there still are only really it. two major players, you Not know? Not true. E- each... each knows the other doesn't want to do it and the other knows the other one kind of doesn't want to do it either even though they're antagonizing each other it's like yeah i don't want to use those though but in terms of stockpiles it's still mostly us in russia oh yeah but yeah, now so, there's so many of them like dozens and dozens of countries have it it's no, no, no. statistically it gets, it gets way more likely only nine it, only nine countries have nukes currently bullshit um in total <laughs> there are totally believed bullshit. to be 16,300 nuclear weapons uh currently spread between the nine countries that's enough uh, to do the, the United States and Russia. I think Russia has slightly more than us, but Russia and the United States have about 7,000 each. And yeah. then UK, France, China, North Korea, India, Pakistan, and Israel all have weapons around in the hundreds. North Korea probably has like 10 tops, you know. But um, at the peak of the Cold War in the 80s, there were 70,000 nukes total. So we've gotten rid of a lot. Yeah, but that's still enough to probably just you know wipe everything out oh yeah that's still plenty well, what's crazy enough to really like maybe not destroy everything everything i mean certainly well, if everyone destroy, was like, launched it's enough to do that yeah but well it won't crack the earth in half but you know it's a it's a thin layer we got that we're working with up here it's the nuclear yeah. winter thing but that's what i mean it's like well, that too joe's like, talking about something else well no i'm just saying that like the the earth like you think about it it's like yeah most of the earth is the earth we only live on the part from here to space that's like 50 60 miles like and we're not even in most of that so it's like of course you don't have to fuck up that much to just ruin everything up here right Right. it's like it's not about destroying the earth as like a rock in space yeah i mean the core of the the earth is still like molten nickel or iron or whatever right it's still pretty hot it's it's cooling really slowly it's like it's like a big loaf of bread yeah that the outside is cold but if you rip it open it's still like hot oh yeah yeah, yeah. setting in the middle so like yeah, it, it this is just the crust. Like that's why they call it the crust. It's what's dried on the outside. So if you start splitting atoms and you crack a hole big enough, you know, the whole balloon might just empty. The water balloon will just leak out completely and it's it's like that's not good. It's so the water get, magma. For, yeah. It's yeah. worth it's worth mentioning. the atmosphere. What if there's sixty miles deep of lava on the surface of the earth? Like, who cares about CO two emissions then? Well actually that's <laughs> another way that a nuclear winter kind of event could start is like a, a gigantic uh, volcano eruption. Yeah. Um, basically, a nuclear winter is just this term that means enough like dirt and soot has been kicked up into the atmosphere that it will block out sunlight to a degree um, that will basically drop global temperatures by like up to three, four degrees Celsius, depending on how many nukes go off. And that's enough right. to just destroy the world food supply and, and create like worldwide famines, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah, that just, and they say that can happen with just 100 nukes going off. 
Now the right. problem it, is it, there's it could tip 60, the balance that nukes. much. Yeah. What if everybody right. gets trigger happy because it's the end times? <laughs> or what if like a rogue AI is like, oh, protect humans, get rid of humans so they can't get hurt. I protected humans. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of scenario. Dude, that's which... what's scary about how like somebody like Elon Musk, who his whole thing is he's doing, he has his hands in everything like alternative energy and like space flight and, you know, electric cars and stuff. But I saw in an interview recently with him, they said, what are the two things that you're, or what's the one thing that you're most worried about for the future? And I think he said the first was, I forget what the first was. It might've been sustainable energy or something, but he said, uh, the other one that keeps him up at night is AI because he's like, we just don't know what that is. Like that's territory that we've never explored into. Like we understand these other issues as the type of issues that they are, even if they're bigger than they've ever been before. We kind of have framework, previous framework to go off of. But to your point about something like, you know, the rogue Ultron AI getting a hold of the, you know, the codes. And it's like, who knows what the fuck that will think? Kill those people, kill some of those people, kill myself. Like, I don't know, maybe the AI well, decides to be a fucking nihilist. I don't know what the AI is going to do. Joe, the crazy thing about that is there's like a list of like 10 things that are, are, are you know, potentially the things that could destroy humans. Um, I, I don't AI's know what, who made there. this list officially. I was looking at it today. I'll, I'll figure that out. But um, there was a bunch of things on there, everything from climate change to hurricanes and, and droughts and all that shit. But the top two, number two was nuclear war, and number one was artificial intelligence. I totally believe that, dude. Because and we you're don't You're talking know. about the scenario where both uh, are, are <laughs> intertwined. So I was on to yeah, something man. there. <laughs> <laughs> for sure dude it makes sense though like these are these are areas that it's like and this gets into something i think that we've ta we've briefly touched upon too previously it's probably something we could do a whole episode on which is called the fermi paradox which this guy i think his name was enrico fermi he was an italian uh you gotta, you gotta say enrico fermi yeah and yeah. he he you? kind of, he was kind of <laughs> he was kind of all about the fact that based on what we've seen in the solar system and just looking out into deep space so far that, you know, we should really see something like some forms of intelligent life. And he came up with this, this whole theory about like, well, how there might not actually be any other intelligent life because they're just sort of these, I, I don't know if he coined the phrase, but I've heard it in other settings. They call them like great filters. This happens in evolution where it's like, oh yeah, something like apocalyptic just kind of filters out all life before that. Like how the dinosaurs didn't have fucking thumbs to build a space program to shoot down meteorites, even though they were around for hundreds of fucking million years. Like mm -hmm. there might be something with AI that we get to where we're like, of course we didn't even think of that. Like dinosaurs didn't even conceptualize meteorites. Maybe that's what AI is for us. Like we can't I, even conceptualize it. Yeah. How are we supposed you know, to defend against it? How right? do you extend well, intelligence I mean, past I, I yourself? You're not smart enough to do it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think the dinosaurs uh, not only knew the meteor was coming, but summoned it. Why well, you would think they it was like a, a dinosaur meteor were... inside job, like 9-11? <laughs> <laughs> the dinosaurs let the, the meteor come so that they can go to war yeah. with space. Tyranna, Tyranna <laughs> Burton and uh, uh, Tar Water made a, made a shitload of money. I'm, try, I'm not trying to picture like incidentally? current the day like White House, Were they the but with dinosaur dinosaurs people. that turned into shitty seagulls. Yeah, and they've been hiding out as chickens ever since. <laughs> yeah, but chickens got the raw end of the deal. They're delicious. No, I, I think dinosaurs are hyper intelligent. We're hyper intelligent telepathic beings that could communicate. You don't. And think they that. had they they their de society became so decadent they oh had a God. vote and they voted to just end it. <laughs> and, uh, they, they summoned a, a nihilistic meteor. dinosaurs. And, they uh -huh. they went to Dino Council and, and hear me out. And when the, and the meteor hit the Earth, they didn't. They they just intended to like kill themselves off, but they actually broke a chunk of the Earth off so big <laughs> that it formed this like oh my bowl God, shape, and that's why the Earth is flat the way it is. you're describing. The, the, the plot shit you just threw in flat earth right movie. there yeah 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 and i stuck a little flat earth to him there. well if you're, like if you're going down the rabbit theories. hole the conspiracy might as well throw in a flat earth or two you have to yeah, yeah. throw a few dozen in there at once yeah so like but that's the, no go ahead look oh i was gonna say like speaking of meteors like it's hard for uh, a, a brain to to conceive of the the just raw power of a nuclear bomb going off you know yeah. I can't. You think you can. Um, I mean, if if you haven't... Uh, and, I got it. Uh, I, I know we say we'll link cafe. everything. I'll try to... 
remember to actually do that, but um, there are videos. We, we did we did well with the last episode. We got this. So, Luke, it's called Atomic Cafe, and it's it's just explosions from all the test bombing. Oh, okay. To watch it destroy islands and those little fake towns they put up. But you have to drink tea while you do it. Yes. You got to be classy, folks. So Cafe. there's there's such yeah, a difference time. between a conventional bomb and an atomic bomb. Um, so, so I you're think saying everybody what? knows that fact and everybody knows that something's different about it. You've probably heard, you know, words like uranium or plutonium or hydrogen. It's, whatever. Per, it's pronounced uranium. Uranium. Um, Close enough. But Big time. It, the, the best way to describe it, I think, is just to say, like, the way that the sun makes energy, you know, that thing that's 93 million miles away but will burn your skin off if you just lay out in it. Um, Isn't that crazy? That's just a bunch yeah, of a nuclear bomb, bombs dude. going off yeah. every second. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and people just lie out in it. So it's like, like even fools. without getting into the physics of... We're sunscreen folks. Of, mm. ...of the collisions of atoms and E equals MC squared, which, by the way, everybody's heard of that equation, right? E equals MC I squared. I don't know what it means, if I'm being honest. Energy... I, this is what, as far as I know. Energy <laughs> equals mass times the speed of light squared. Correct. How do you square the speed of light? It's it's 300,000 squared. That's it. That's yeah. a lot of numbers. So the, the, the point is, Joe, that two things about that <laughs> equation are important. One is that it's equating energy and mass. So it's saying that yeah. energy and mass are swappable. They're on either side of an equal sign. And specifically, a small amount of mass becomes energy times a giant number, the speed of light squared. So by oh. smushing together uranium to critical mass about the size of like the hood of your car probably, probably smaller now, um, yeah. you hit critical mass and that means this chain reaction of um, atoms splitting up happens. Yeah. So you split up this heavy element uranium. It splits into, I forget the details of what it splits into, but the key is it splits into two atoms that whose combined mass is slightly less than the mass they had earlier. And it gives off another neutron, which keeps the chain reaction going. So it's the missing yeah. mass from the splitting of the atom that converts into it's, energy. So it's the, uh, the best, cool. the best metaphor I've heard is it's if you, you know, when you break on a pool table, yeah, it's imagine if every pool ball you hit, hit another dozen pool balls, exactly pool b balls exponentially. And it just keeps doing that until, until your whole, the whole bar is full of pool balls and the whole neighborhood. And that's what causes like that giant boom. And like just lot knocks buildings down. It can like just make a fireball because just so much energy. It just, it, it can ignite the air and just create a pushing b ball of fire. Well, it's a giant it's, mushroom. It's interesting. You say I'm that get, I'm getting excited. Guys. Well, no, this ties back into the, like what we were talking about earlier up. about the Fermi paradox and like great filters and like why don't we see like super many or we haven't found any yet like other space like fairing civilizations because like maybe a lot of them just fuck up at some point and when you think about something like nukes like we figured out instantly how to use like n nuclear technology and nuclear science to just murder each other on mass levels mm -hmm. we like we have First thing. we have nuclear power plants but like the holy grail of nuclear science is uh fusion power plants like the ones that are much cleaner and like much less like radioactive in their byproducts, and it's like we we still won't figure that uh, out but, for another like gotta, thirty years. We got to talk about the thorium reactors they're building in in Asia. Is, is, that, is that is that like a fusion reactor? So it, one of the like you said the problem. So the way an actual let's talk about nuclear reactors for a second because they're cool. Johnny has a PhD in uh, in what bullshit. Was, was that in? It's no, in bullshit. No, it's in a. Uh, it's in. All right, go ahead. <laughs> nuclear something. <laughs> uh, but. So the way it fucking works is when you make a rod of uranium, it's unstable and it gives off all, all this heat as it's decaying. So they basically have a giant pool, a lead bucket full of water, and they have a bunch of uranium rods or plutonium or whatever the hell it is. And they lower it in and out of the water depending how much heat they want to, to, exactly, yeah. to, come, to come out of. The, but that's it. It's like having a. It's like heating your house by dropping giant rocks. Spurt, well, basically, like, you know, what it is, Johnny, rocks is in a bucket of water. When you make it's, a it's bomb, insane monkey math. Yeah. When you make it's a bomb this, like, of this stuff, you hit. You create so much heat that you get critical mass, which is when the explosion happens. But a nuclear yeah. power plant is just keeping that reaction from um, getting too extreme, right. where the heat would cause the Chaining. whole thing to go. So it never and, allows it to hit critical mass or hit critical heat. 
because it keeps it uh, regulated a, unless it and that so <laughs> yeah and then that's a meltdown that's where the the bars these rods that are rod shaped for being able to diffuse heat they they get so hot they melt down to the bottom of the lead tank exactly and, they, they, and that's bad because now you have a big mass of it so it'll heat up faster that's a meltdown a melt through is if it melts through the bottom of that which is what happened at fukushima which and is why they just had to the keep, sea water that's why they just they basically just had to keep dumping water on it till it it leaked into the that was all they could do like you need it to disperse somewhat or it creates a nuclear explosion yeah so they kind of had to just be like oh no it's contained <laughs> and they were just trying to cool it off but that's crazy. Anyway, so one of the byproducts from this is 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 you can it either it's not quite thorium or maybe it is, uh, or you can easily refine the byproduct into thorium. But anyways, it's still pretty radioactive and like not great for you, but not useful to power stuff. But some guy figured out a, a design for a thorium plant where instead of having to put stuff in and out of a chamber and emptying it, it's a whole thing. He he designed this like crazy long chamber where the thorium at the t- goes in at the top and it goes like miles underground and by the time it hits the bottom because it, it decays faster or much slower yeah so by the time it hits the bottom it's 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 inert or something but if, if you I, I don't know but they're trying to build these things so is, if, if it, they can figure out how to make the waste product of nuclear waste pow- a power source then you know all that waste becomes fuel again and well, you can just keep yeah, doing that as long as, you, yeah, as long as your science yeah. game is up so yeah, I guess a big part of it is um, like uh, p- people hear the word radiation and it just freaks them out, you know. Well, I'm, it, it I'm is scared. scary. Yeah. So uh, it's worth noting, like, um, there's electromagnetic radiation, which is everything oh from um, <laughs> it's gonna get me the light you see to the um, heat that your body gives off that's called infrared radiation right that's just what we feel as heat um there's visible light there's uv light right all these things are all radiation right electromagnetic radiation the thing that they're talking about with nuclear weapons the kind of radiation that can damage you is called ionizing radiation this is the type that does sound scary I, you know, like yeah, an ion. Remember from high school chemistry, an ion is is the when an ion atom cannon. Loses ion an cannons in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it shoots a ball like a blue ball. And yeah, knocks and your it, shields it, out. it knocks your shields out temporarily, so mm-hmm. you can escape uh, Hoth to get to outer space. Do you yeah. think that's what Why Adam Star just like a mini Star Trek thing? Oh no, I think that's Star what Star Wars. Wars is. Get, get your shit together, uh, yeah, right. Luke. You have to, you, you must go now. That's a big uh, uh, faux pas. Oh, I'm sorry. A big fox pass. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry, we're not saying things pretentiously, right? We're yeah, saying yeah. the way we're we would say it's non-pretentious. Yeah, Fair that's enough. how you spell it. Fox pass, right? Pass. Wait, Luke. To your point about scary radiation, though, do you do you guys know about the elephant's foot? Have you heard of the elephant's foot? Uh, yeah. What is tell it? us about the elephant's foot. All right. So the elephant's foot is so the, probably the most apocalyptic meltdown. I I I think. I mean, people argue Fukushima, but I still think it was Chernobyl for sure because that place is fucked. Like you do not want to go to Chernobyl. Have you and seen fact, like video and footage from Chernobyl? Well, actually, yeah. it's it's ironic because the area around Chernobyl where people aren't allowed is actually now like a haven for animals who like have been hunted out in other places because they're like, yeah, radiation is way less harmful to us than just humans in general. In the short term, oh yeah, yeah they're definitely. fucked up, but there's a yeah. lot of them. But anyway, so <laughs> so the 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 nuclear like rods or whatever, like the actual power source. Um, that obviously, like, so Chernobyl melted down or whatever. Yeah, give and, the give the quick summary for anybody who heard the name but didn't really. Ever oh, know. I don't know what actually happened. I just know that there was a meltdown and like the lid blew off. I think actually because of the pressure, like we were talking about how they cool mm-hmm. it with water, like that's what like blew off the roof of Chernobyl, and then that just like be, because yeah, water like pressurizes. Yeah. That's how you make electricity, it's, it's, turning turbines, but also blowing off the roofs of nuclear power plants. Yeah, it's either that or uh, you run out of water. That those right. are the, like something or happens if there's, to your water source. Yeah, those if, are the if two there's things an, that could yeah, happen, if there's an really. issue. So anyway, so so that's what happened, and it spread like radiation. Uh, over a fair amount of Eastern Europe. I mean, of course, this was like in the 80s with like failing Soviet era technology. So it was bound to happen. Yeah, it, it's really bound. To it, it, it's a situation that was kind of like very unique to the so <laughs> failing. Yeah, Soviet this was um, 1986. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, so it was I, a blackout I, power failure that caused it. 
Yeah, I mean, they they lost power to their water pump. Nuclear nuclear safety is a whole other issue. But anyways, this uh, nuclear waste melted through, like you were saying, the fall down or whatever it's called. What did you call it? Where it melts through? Yeah. So, like, that's what happened at Chernobyl, and now... A melt-through. Well, here's the problem, is that, so, Ch- Chernobyl, so, it's, it's like, below whatever the building was. It just, like, in this cave, because that's where it settled, in this cave. It, like, fell through the ceiling, and it, it looks like it melted with the concrete, so it looks like this giant, fat elephant's foot. And they've intermittently, like, sent people in to be like, all right, check it out. Like, we are Soviet Russia. Like, go somebody. And <laughs> back in, like like, right after the incident... Um, I think it was like once you entered the room, like you would you would basically hemorrhage within thirty seconds of like being like within sight of it. Mm, that sounds about right. And, and and like that was like you couldn't get close enough to really like do much with it. But like the last time they sent somebody there, they said the radiation levels were like half. But if you weren't still in like crazy protection, you would just like still hemorrhage or whatever. Silly, yeah. But it's like that's that's just the byproduct of when that goes wrong. You and, know? and to it's give like, to give the finish off the idea of the the chemistry of it. Um, ionizing radiation is is called ionizing because it strips electrons off the atoms in your body. Which, which I need, is not I what need you, those, right? Yeah, that's which is crazy to, to think that that yeah, like strip of like if you for example a banana gives off a certain amount of ionizing radiation, but it's so that's minuscule true. that it, it just it's 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 like a nothing, right? Yeah. The the point is being around um, intense radiation is. Hit, I mean, you're you're filled with billions and billions of atoms. So it's like a breeze versus a hurricane. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, like all the your wind atoms isn't are harmful up. You until stop there's being too much. You. Right. Your body stops bre- working. Yeah. A breeze won't kill me ever. A 400 mile per hour tornado will. But like sandstorms on Mars can strip your skin off your bones, right? Probably. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I would assume it's fucking Mars. I picked it because no one could call me out on it. Also, Mars has terrifying radiation, too. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that that's checks out, actually. It, yeah. That's an example. A weird thing about but, the radiation, uh, though, I heard on the podcast today. I was I was just listening to some nuclear weapon podcast. And, of course you were. Yeah, what a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, they, oh, wait, they were saying Monday. that pe- the, the radiation <laughs> from the Nagasaki and Hiroshima ones wasn't Hiroshima. as intense as you might think. Like, um, on day one, it was value X by day. Um, what did it say? Uh, oh yeah. One day after the bomb went off, the radiation was already a thousand times less. So, yeah. um, part of the well, reason bombs, for that, we, like we were saying, were firecrackers compared to, well, that that's part of it, but now. it's also, um, they call it nuclear fallout. If you detonate a nuclear bomb above a city, like in the air, it doesn't cause as much of a radiation yeah. problem. But if you detonate right. it very close to the ground, it blows up all this material. Now, mind you, right. the heat is the kind of heat that would melt sand into glass, you know? Yeah, we're, we're that's, talking that's like why the a, temperature a reactor of the sun exploding. Uh, yeah, that's why a reactor exploding is terrifying because that's on ground level. Yeah. Um, where, so, yeah, if Chernobyl had gone, like, hit critical mass... And it, it, you know, and gone nuclear, um, <laughs> it would have been really bad because, oh, like, the winds would have carried that all across Asia. That's the other problem I forgot to mention about the elephant's foot is that, so remember I said it settled in a cave, like, under the plant? Yeah. So there's a water table underneath that. Oh, shit. Is it moving towards it? Yeah. It's, God it's, damn it. It's, it's an elephant's foot of nuclear, like, Just stomping its way down. God Just damn it. Slowly. So they're like, yeah, it might take 100 years. It might take 1,000 years. It might take till nobody knows it's there anymore. Because they built some. You know what they built over Chernobyl? Do you know what the dome yeah, is? Yeah, I wanted called? to get to that before. Oh, we isn't it called Chernobyl. Pr- Object, like, it has no, a... I'm pretty sure it's... Well, no, don't help him. Don't help him. What was it called? The <laughs> object? Yeah, you start ob- it with object. Yeah, go ahead, Luke. <laughs> the Vegas. <laughs> Luke, finish your writing. No, I just saw this on the Wikipedia. It, I, I think I have something here. <laughs> the Wikipedia? <laughs> it's pronounced Wikipedia. If it's on there, it's got to be good. What's it say? Um, it's called... Cool. It was... Can I just say it, it was... They're talking about the cap that went over the... Um, so the first radio. thing they built a cap to go over it, and then that started to leak. So they built a second one that was even bigger next to it, and then they yeah. rolled it like it, with it was a giant hanger that they made. So uh, and of then concrete of concrete and like gi- the the ships they used to move spaceships around, and uh, they they just drove it 
over the, the, the plant and then like close the garage door on it to seal it in. And like if, they, if it starts leaking, that's literally the only thing they could do, again, is build a bigger one and p- drive it over and close that garage door, right? And Luke, do you know what it's called? Tell me, Joe. <laughs> uh, it's called Object Russia Shed, right? It's called the Sarcophagus. Oh, oh that's so cool. yeah, that's what yeah. I saw. But but its official name is called Object like Cover or something oh, really? like that. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to say like, oh, how are you dealing with that like horrifying radiation problem? We built sarcophagus. It's good now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that accent wasn't very convincing, but neither was your explanation. So I don't know what to be concerned about. Veritasium I mean, just, uh, did a, pr- a few of pr- uh, videos that were pretty cool from inside Chernobyl. Because you can go yeah, there now. You just can't spend a lot of time there. That's not a selling point. No, I'm not doing either of those. Oh, I'm not yeah. selling. I'm, I got, I'm I got testicles to pre- protect. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Fuck that. Would you go, would you go to Chernobyl for a day, Luke, for $10,000? Yes. Just spend a day and a night in Chernobyl? Yes. For ten grand. Yes. Also, I feel like Bullshit. it probably attracts a lot of like nihilists. I mean, it, it, it's supposedly such a disturbing... Probably attracts a lot of assholes. Disturbing, like, feel. Like, even now that there's, like, plant and animal life and it seems natural, so, there's so a weird... So why would you have to go there? Just watch a movie. Like, stillness. There's a sterility to it, it yeah. yeah. there's there's a weirdness there. Um, I, I believe that, yeah, for sure. So I'm going to play seen, a quick... I mean, I've seen videos of it, yeah. I'm going to play a quick clip just of... This is um, by someone you've probably heard the name before and the quote, but maybe not connected it. I don't know. Um the the famous Oppenheimer quote. You guys know which one I'm talking about? Oppenheimer. Fox. Yes. Yeah. He was a theoretical physicist that was like, I think, head of the Manhattan Project. That that was the secret integral project. To the, mm-hmm. at, certainly at least integral. And that's um, what led Can the U.S. to develop its first nuclear weapons. So anyways, here's, here's oh. his famous quote. He knew the world would not be the same. Two people laughed. People cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. So he said that after the first um, test, they, oh, I, mm, actually, I forget the date that he said that, I don't know if it was after they actually bombed Japan. But Sounds like a fucking Twilight Zone episode. That's it, terrifying. For him, you know, just imagine you're... Jesus. This is, Joe, why I worry about the artificial intelligence thing. Because at that yeah. time, you have this weird mix of, like, obviously, it's different. They were at war, and they had to find the weapon. But for the scientists involved, they just get so lost in the years of work. They're just discovering yeah. science like they usually do. Also, it's a fucking war. Like, you're you're lucky that the government's putting you in a lab, because... They use, World War One was the last like big war where they put science. They, like, if you got drafted as a scientist or a writer or like, too bad. like a mathematician, yeah. it was like, well, yeah, you're an infantryman now. That's yeah. go shoot. You're them. smart. Can you cut off legs? Can and you be like, a field surgeon? Yeah, yeah it's like I, I invented all these theorems and like I'm really good at physics and like designing stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. Can you design a better a way to get out of trench foot? If not, fucking change your socks and get back in there. Be like uh, penicillin is invented for another forty years. Yeah. What do I do? It's like uh, World go War Two was one of the first times they were like, yeah, let's not have have all of our smart people die in, in trenches this time. Let's use them. Well, that's when you had... That was also the, the first war where you had you had rocketry, you had computers, yeah. you had coding. Like, ha- I mean, you always had, like, secret Ram. codes and stuff, but, like, not on the level where you start integrating, like, actual computer transmissions and, you know, those sorts. Because, I mean, World War One, you still had fucking horse, like, runner messengers and shit, you know? Like, yeah. World War Two changed all of that. There's, there was definitely... They fucking invented radar. But I, I didn't even mean like Hedy Lamar. I'm trying yeah, to, I'm that. trying to imagine like the scientists might not even have, some of them at least fully connected like what I'm doing and where it will go. You know, like oh, I think because I think definitely you're right. Yeah, there, there's such sure. a fascination with just discovering like splitting the atom, like discovering the foundation of what 
the stuff we yeah. call matter, the beds you sleep on and the chairs you sit in, like figuring out what that's made of and, and just playing with it. It's but like they, the kids they in a also, sandbox. Yeah. They also were like, this is a way to get access to energy. And you got to realize, if you were an adult in the yeah. 40s, like, you know, you probably, you know, if you lived in America, like, you probably saw horses and shit when you were a kid all over the place. And it's like, sure, yeah. I, I just flew to San Francisco. Like, this is crazy, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I remember when we got, like, telephones in town, and it's like, I'm looking at a video, uh, like, I'm looking at a television at a fair, and it's like, are you kidding me? Are those, how did you get the tiny people in the box? Like, so they assume they'd figure out how to make, turn that atomic atom splitting thing that the military figure out. I'm like, oh, eventually we'll just have flying cars and shit by right. like the 50s or 70s at least. Dude, right? that's like every Isaac Asimov novel ever. Yeah. Like people just have like little like everything devices that are like atomic powered, you know? Yeah, that's like you, you expect that to come with energy yeah, revolutions sure. to just have like another wa a wave of stuff now because, because uh, yeah, that's what happens. But so I think uh, he it felt, didn't really happen quite that way. I think he felt bad about being like... He became known as the father of the atomic bomb. And so after, um, in like the, uh, after World War II period, he became like a, a big leader in the um, uh, nuclear proliferation like movement where just trying to get people to not build them and go after them. And this was before the inevitable like, you know, Cold War, like, where Soviet and, and uh, Soviet Union and the U.S. were just like competing, building more and more weapons. You you know how that all started too. It's so sad and ridiculous. I forget which side started it, but they were like behind on their production. They I think it was the Russians. They like knew we had all these nukes. Mm -hmm. um, oh no, it was when the Russians first like figured it out because I don't think it took them to like forty nine to get it. So we were the only ones with nuclear weapons for like four or five years after the. World War Two. Yeah, it was but 49. the Russian. The, the Russians, when we found out like that they had one and they announced it, uh, like we we or somebody, uh, yeah, one of the spy agencies were like sent out like leaked information. Be like, we actually have you know, if we had five, they said, oh, we actually ha are up to like five hundred already. So good for you for having one. And they're like, shit, we got to make a bunch. And they're like, oh, they actually bought that, and now they have three hundred, and we only have a hundred. So like, they, it was it <laughs> was posturing. Funny. To try to like scare the other one, be like, "Yeah, my dick's eight inches." And they're like, "Well, mine's ten. Well, mine's 12. And it's like, uh, "You guys got to back this up it's like, at some uh, point." None of your dicks are this big. You just all have nukes. Yeah, what, unfortunately, what's the equivalent yeah. of that, like in in history, like like because it, it's just like su obviously such an illogical thing to have thirty thousand each. It's like you have enough to destroy the well, other. Because they were person. all worried that because they weren't. You know, there's only so many cities. It's all about taking out their nukes. The, theoretically, these nukes would all be crashing into each other in the air, which would destroy on your like things anyway. But you know what's scary too is that like yeah. this this on a practical level ties somewhat into like m the idea of like military industrial complex and like a lot of people make a lot of money off building and maintaining nukes just like they do oh with any God, other weapons. So much money. And there's a lot of states with like missile silos and you know they manufacture whatever equipment and whatever whether it's the bombs themselves or the people employed around them in some whatever way and it's like if you know anything about America I don't know how it is in other countries like Russia but if I'm sure it's like weirdly corrupt in their own way, of course, but oh, in America, like there's there's a fucking coin machine operation lobby in America, mm -hmm. and I forget how much they pay, but it's still like millions of dollars a year to Congress, and it's like to not change okay. anything about our our change, right? Because like they have a vested interest; these like big companies who you know sell these coin op that's machine crazy, operators. Dude. So they have like to if, update all their equipment. It's, like if that's it's cheaper fucking to just lobby, like pay yeah, Congress. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? You have a chance against the fucking nuclear missile lobby? Well, well that's also, yeah. Like, I mean, Try, try to tell some congressman from pick a. I, I don't mean to single out Montana, but let's say there's some district on Montana. Sorry, with Montana like listeners. Three hundred people in it, and it's like like eighty percent of our federal money comes because we have one nuclear missile silo. You're not taking our missile silo. Yeah, you're not. I'm not going to vote for any of your shit. Go fuck yourself. All I need, like you, that's the one thing you can't. There's nothing else in my district to take from me, but my you're not taking my missile silo. It's like, all right, that's why we have like '70s reel-to-reel -reel tape computers in there still, because we're not going to give you more money for nukes, but like you won't let us get rid of it. You right. know, that's how the computers haven't been updated in a lot of these places. So they still run like the old magnetic tape reel-to-reel -reel ones. Some that of the you see some of the nukes are on Space floppy Odyssey. disks, dude. Yeah, they, yeah. The, the, yeah, that's more advanced than what I'm talking about. They, but the good thing about it is you can't hack them. 
because yeah, how do you hack a floppy disk this? that was made in yeah. like 1992? There's no there's good no luck, way to connect Ultron, it to the try internet. To get, try to get into, try to break into that uh, fucking. There's no Wi-Fi the in there because it's full of tubes. It's got little light bulbs in it to make it work. Like, yeah, yeah. If you yes, look at no light those, bulbs, those old um, like bunkers that that were sort of like the deterrence bunkers, they have these complex systems. Like obviously, they don't want to launch. Um, they don't want to launch if it's a false alarm. So they had all these um, ways to control that. They also don't want some guy to just wake up and decide he's crazy that day and decide he's going to like ruin the world by like. That's a good point too. Yeah, so for sure. There were there were protections where um, it had to be two people. Everybody in the bunker had a sidearm, so that if any one of them decided, oh, this to, sounds like a stable situation. Well, it's better than nobody having anything. I guess they decided. Yeah, you can't you can't have the one gun that says break in case uh, the one flare gun that breaks in case of emergency because that guy gets the flare gun and then launches the nuke. Yeah, you know? and so the other thing I'm is you had a to turn about that. That's actually not bad. You had to yeah. confirm this like book worth <laughs> like there was like a book you had to go through that had all these different codes in it and all the codes had to check out to know that it was a it was a um, not a a false signal but a real signal and then finally two guys had to turn a key at exactly the same time and that key the keys were about 10 feet apart so no one person could um what, what if i rip out his arm and rip out another no guy's they have arm. to be turned off at the same yeah. time so you would have to a ripped like, off arm tie a string to them at the, the just what, the right angle saying, and, yeah. and or no, tie just, a string to one and push a stick on the other that's and what time saying, it yeah. just perfectly right so it, sounds but really, it was it one of those like keys shot that, by a kernel before you pull that off. It was one of those keys with like the springy turn, like he, it took like a real force to turn it. Oh, a springy oh turn? you didn't say that. Yeah, okay. It you wasn't just like the key going into your house or something. I would hope. Not. Yeah, this one gets stuck a little. You gotta jiggle it back and forth. <laughs> don't break it because we can't. We only got the one. Yeah, <laughs> D- definitely don't jam it in there. You, you gotta do you go think so? So do you think this is something I've actually wondered? Is let's say our president, who's not the most stable gentleman. How dare you? Um, Name so me one said, stable diesel? person that eats that much McDonald's. I know. Hey, so I don't know I how did, much. Did McDonald's you see that eats. guy in Wisconsin? Or whatever I, I, he ate his thirty thousand Big Mac. I, I saw a headline. He's eaten thirty thousand Big Macs in his life. I think he's a lawyer or some shit. So I also that guy seems reasonable. But anyways, I'm yeah. just saying. Do you think he would do it? Do you think he would ever, like, actually, when he said to North Korea, he's like, yeah, I got a button, and it's bigger than yours. Like, the most childish response to uh, to nuclear brinksmanship. Yeah. Uh, but he did say it. And, and my first thought is, would he actually, like, do that and launch a nuke? And would they listen to him? Like, do you think the military would be like, uh, okay, sir? So or do you both think they'd of be those like, are no, scary. You guys come consider. around every four years. I know. Because on the one hand... Um, I don't yeah, like it. Yes. I don't like it either. It, he's crazy, and you don't want to consider that that um, w- which neuron fires in which direction could control the fate of humanity in a brain like like the orange brain of Trump. But what you also don't want to consider is that that systems that are put in place, like mutually assured destruction, means that Russia or the U.S. has no incentive to fire because it will ensure your own destruction. It's a suicide pact, basically. Right, but but what if he like let's say he people. used it on a non-nuclear power? Like, what if he decided to nuke Iran before they got nukes? Because then all, ever, anyone else with a nuke is gonna be like, "Whoa, keep an eye on America." Yeah, and and so, um, but that's like what such if, bad PR. An, another like, thing would be, what if it got it's an out? Apocalyptic level. It is. So where where along the yeah. chain of command, Johnny, would you think that that um, the first I can't do this would happen? We, oh, the first. See, person? I don't know because yeah. our military really is like the best in the world, and they're really you know they're really like really efficient. Something we're really good at is our military organization. I mean, theoretically, Japan. an order. And this is a part of it we've been working on since World War II, and for like fifty years, it was the focus. So, you know. I don't know. I mean, it I, really I, is an example of, of the, the difficulty of finding it in that perfect balance between following orders, but then occasionally knowing like, hey, the order is bullshit. I need to change the rules. We get you, raised you know as kids like you have to follow the rules. It's like, yeah, rules make sense. But what if the rule is bullshit? Then you have to change right, the, what rule the rule and make a better dumb. one. You know, I saw a headline earlier today on CNN.com and it said something like, 
severed feet keep washing up ashore in Western Canada. What? I've seen that headline pops up every couple of years. What the fuck? It's a real thing. But Something's that, going on over there. But that's there. my point. Like, I, maybe the guy who's severing feet is also the missile command guy. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, that's true. People are fucking insane. He might, he might hear that order and be like, "Yes, finally, yeah. God, oh, stop chopping." And crazy. How long I've wanted to turn this key. Crazy I people that cut off feet and then just feet. like put them in rivers or whatever. <laughs> well, no, no, because I don't know. There isn't there yeah, isn't a, a scourge of people waking up with a foot missing, or you know what I mean. There's not all <laughs> yeah. these one. I'm assuming people. the people die, and he just happens to cut them into pieces. That's a good theory too. Luke. But we why don't is know, it just though. the foot that washes up? Uh, that's an interesting psychological Cause, angle, Johnny, because he's ready to pull the trigger and launch the nukes. Yeah, because he's got other things to worry about, and he doesn't blend that one. He just throws it overboard. Man, this is getting dark real fast. So uh, that I mean, <laughs> but this is this is what this is the topic. It's a dark is, topic. Sorry, folks. Uh, sometimes we do silly, lively, light. You knew what episodes. you were getting into. Sometimes we discuss uh, politics or you know global Holocaust fireballs that end all of humanity. All right, Johnny, uh, I got and one. also foot cutter offers. Whatever the fuck you call that, <laughs> that's got to be a specific. So we we term. tested the first nuclear bomb. <laughs> On July sixteenth, nineteen forty-five, in New Mexico. And well, you're it, assuming it, of the world's uh, around, It's New yeah. Mexico. It was yeah. less than a month <laughs> later. <laughs> it was August sixth, nineteen forty-five, that we dropped. Um, uh, it's the pronounced Hiroshima Augustus. Bomb, but go on. That bomb was Hiroshima. U- that bomb was a uranium bomb named Little Boy. And then it, mm-hmm. it was it was only three days later that we dropped the second one on Nagasaki, and that was a Fat plutonium man. bomb. Named yeah. Fat Man. Um, Do you know why? The death because range Pluto is hard to say for lots planet. of reasons, but um, as as many, it, the death range could be as high as three hundred thousand. Um, half of which happened on the first day, and the others over many months from things like burns, radiation sickness, and malnutrition, because like all the food was fucked. Also, everyone around you is, like, passed out from radiation poisoning. So it's like, someone's got to get up and make some soup and bring it over to me in a ladle. Oh, it's radiation soup. Fucked up. Yeah, a lo- and that's how you know but that you can't we eat from really the garden. didn't. We didn't really there know is no how garden. it would It was work. vaporized. That's You're true. Fucked. Yeah. But we didn't know how, what exactly it would do because we sent Marines in and a lot of them got, some of them got, the first wave got fucked up from the radiation. It's like, we definitely wouldn't have done that. But they if, also knew because you know what the other plan was? I forget what it was fucking called. It was called like Operation Something Insane, like Operation Judgment Day or something, like something crazy. And Operation was, Righteous Glory. No, it was basically the version <laughs> of like the end of World War II where we do a land invasion oh, of Joe, Japan. Oh, Joe, it's called Saving Private Ryan. Oh, that was uh, right. Uh, part two, Pacific Rim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nailed it. Pacific Rim. No, job. no. So this is the myth. The accept. Sorry, the conventional st- story, and uh, uh, that we've all learned and accepted is the alternative was a land invasion of the main island, home islands of Japan, and we knew how. Not tough, a myth. It was an actual plan. We knew how much the act, the the like, just taking the I- small islands throughout the Pacific that they had conquered, like how hard that was, and the casualty rates were really high in the Pacific. Yeah. And so they were said they they've you know they know they're losing. They've been fortifying their home islands for like ten years now in like wartime economy mode. So it's gonna. They estimated a million. A yeah. million casualties, right. uh, one to three million, something crazy. No, th- uh, yeah, and, yeah, and they're such an honor-driven yeah. culture. Like, w- they, well, they wouldn't we just lost, surrender. Just so you know, America, no. the Al- or America, and all theaters of the war. Because we were only in it for like three years, four years. We lost about four hundred thousand men. Uh, so That's the idea so of many. doubling that number yeah. and adding it on, in the, uh, you know, uh, was terrifying. But really, there's a deadline. Uh, like a week before, week after those bombings you mentioned, which was part of the like uh, uh, treaty that was agreed between America, the Allies, England, and Russia because they had teamed up at to fight Hitler. And part of the agreement was how Europe would be split up. Like you know, it was ba- it, and they agreed whoever got to Berlin first, like got Berlin. Uh-huh. Uh, or whatever, but they got there at the same time, so that's why that we had did the whole East West Berlin thing. It was a whole thing. Oh, interesting. That came later, but I think that p- whole thing came later. Actually, they, uh, but but part of the deal was if I think it was July first or something or July whatever. If we didn't get if Japan hadn't surrendered, 
then the Russians would enter on that front. But yeah, they weren't going right. to enter because we wanted them to stay focused on Hitler. So they would wait until this. But we also didn't want them involved in post-war Japan because we saw them eating up a lot of Europe. So they, like, if we could get Japan to surrender by this date, then Russia wouldn't get involved. But if they did, they would totally push for it, throw all the human lives at it because that's how Russia survived that war. Was massive right. casualties. For, I so another, actually, everywhere. another million to get an Asian base would be where you know it w- they would have just done it. They were in that mode. So we dropped nukes on them because we really wanted them to surrender to us for the, just for our own thing. Well, and, yeah, uh, we, we and that's a to fucked up reason them. though to, to yeah. drop nuclear weapons on people. So that changes that whole ethical equation because the other t- way you're weigh- weighing the lives of your own men versus the lives of these people that you're saying, hey, sur- we'll, we'll warn you first, surrender, we're going. But it nuke all factors you. in together too. It's like, all right, like you might have been leaning that way from a strategical standpoint because you're like, yeah, I don't want to have to fucking split. Japan with Russia, like fucking North and South Korea or whatever. It might you know, still like, be split like that. No, that's yeah, what I mean. Exactly. Like, yeah, like you just want it as an ally. East and West now. Germany yeah. only ended like 30 years ago. That shit yeah. went on for way too long. But there's, there was like also 50 years. But there, there, that's what I mean. Like there's more than one reason. It's also like, yeah, weighing the lives of like, oh, yeah, it might cost like a million other like of our own soldiers versus like way fewer of our own people. But like, there's also war weariness too. Like, I remember our our grandpa Poppy. Like, I asked him about that once. Oh, like your grandpa's in... the only one named Poppy. Yeah, he was. He was the man. He was the one. Did you did you, you fight don't know for how America? Many poppies we have. Did you, you fight for America, Luke? I didn't think so. Actually, my grandpa so, hey. was in the island hopping uh, campaign in, in okay, World War II. So, well, I got you beat, Luke. Three of our four grandparents were active service members during yeah, the so war. Yeah, so you don't love America, anyway. So we love it more apparently <laughs> um, because of maths. <laughs> Seventy-five percent of our grandparents fought but against. That's whatever. a C average. So go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> you're not even passing. Um, no, they 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 really did though. But so he was in he was in Germany like all through the whole fucking thing like D Day like Battle of the Bulge like all that shit like and he I asked him I was like because that like came up when I was in college or high school or whatever you know this like question of like oh yeah like should we have dropped the bomb or invaded. And I just kind of, you know, because he, he would talk like a little bit about the war and his experiences and that sort of thing. But like, I, I sort of asked him along those lines, you know, would you have gone to Japan if they hadn't dropped nuclear bombs and they were like, oh, we're going to invade Japan? And he was just like, nope. Well, I he, won the war so, in Germany. I was like the only one who survived. I was ready to go home. He and, also, the, the way it worked then was you had to do a certain amount of these like, uh, of time to earn enough credits, basically, to, to fulfill your draft service. So since he was like a D-Day guy, most of them were were good and were able to get out after Germany. Well, most of them, well, yeah. But like some of them, you know, or if they were injured or they're not active or, or you, know, you got drafted later. No, but I'm saying there were, were people, uh, soldiers in Europe, like after Germany, it was obviously, sur- you know, it, before Germany surrendered, but it was obvious that they were like the race to Berlin was on that the yeah, right. European war was over and they were like, fuck, I'm going to get sent to, to the Pacific. Like, yeah. They, like I'm going to have to do this all over again. And then some of them were ready in, like shipping out and, you know, we, we were about to push that redirect the war effort for, to all the, to throw oh, yeah, everything at Japan. Sure. And they're yeah. like, yeah, they surrendered. We nuke them, nuked them. So there were a lot of factors at the time, but well, that's you what still I mean. haven't like, answered they, me, Luke. But they would have, they would have gone, but like people did not want to go. You know what I mean? Like the public opinion was definitely like, yeah, bring our boys home, right, like, but, drop the bomb on those fuckers. But it all started because of you know? Pearl Harbor. So they're like, yeah, sure. we can't just, like, yeah, they're, absolutely. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're going to bomb Hawaii again. We can't just like. No, stop. that's what I mean. Like, like, why are we taking time? You, you're saying there's a way to end this war, and none yeah. of us <laughs> die more. Like, that's after, true. After like you know years and like like you said, hundreds of thousands of people. Like everybody probably knew somebody. Like you think about like like recent wars, like like in Iraq and Afghanistan. Like I fucking know people who know people who died. Like we're talking about like a few thousand there. Like you talk about World War Two, you're talking about hundreds of thousands, and it's like people don't want to keep doing that for years at a time yeah that's true you know so if there's an out that that tilts opinion yeah the sure. out, Especially the we out went, is good we no matter what like it is to, to make it stop temporarily even if like it's going to happen again like people realize like at well, the end of yeah. something like world war ii like this is not this is not sustainable this is not going to lead to like some some long-term paradise like we, we we're just going to destroy everything like 
Well, we have the United Nations what, now, so. We, we have to do something to stop it. You're forgiven. Well, that's the idea behind the United Nations, right? It's like, all right, let's come together and, like, that was the same idea behind, like, the EU, too, where it's like, uh, we need to not, like, keep destroying, trying to destroy each other because now we have the power to destroy you, me, that guy, whoever else is on the planet. Also, because they're like, it's, it's not, like, it's just not a good bet. It's like, we keep, like, if someone not, does well yeah, for right. a while and then you get beat up again, and it's like, we can all just do better if we just take a part of the whole instead of trying to fight for the whole. Which is uh, fucked up, too, because, like, like we said, it, I mean, you look at, like, Europe, and it's like, yeah, I mean, they've been, like, colonizing and imperializing the fuck out of, you know, anyone they can for h- hundreds of years now. But um, even so, like, w- with, like, mutually assured destruction now, it's like, well, yeah, you can have these proxy wars in these countries where it's like you, you look throughout like the Cold War and you saw this. I mean, you can go back to uh, when uh, the Soviets were in Afghanistan in the 80s. That was basically their Vietnam and the CIA. What was that movie? Mr. Wilson's War or whatever. Charlie Wilson's Charlie War. Wilson's War or whatever. And it was about how like the CIA fucking funded, gave arms to the Taliban to the fight Mujahed, against. No, they were the Mujahideen back then. And they whatever. were anti-Soviet. Yeah. Like, so they were so. the same people who became the Taliban, right? Uh, pretty much. And we gave them mad weapons they're, to fight against the they, Soviets. The training they got from us is like they went and trained the Taliban on how to like run a like a cell and independent also groups weapons, and organization yeah. all and that weapons shit, and all that yeah so and that's what I mean like that that was a proxy war and and it it makes it makes sense to do that because you can economically hurt your rivals and then f- jump in where they're lacking now and gain economic advantage right yeah well I mean North Korea is a great example we uh, and by we I mean uh, who do you, who NATO. do you mean by we NATO. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> uh, like I NATO and the UN has backed South Korea, and China pretty much is like the uh, the big and I guess Russia maybe, but not too China much buys anymore, all their but, fucking coal. And China is like a big supporter of North Korea, yeah. and that's why they called an armistice because. Like they were just, you know what I mean? It's like America could throw a lot of shit at North Korea, and China had a lot of resources they could put together to keep that from happening. And they're like, you know what? Let's just split this because, like, that's what it was about. It was even about now. The reason that Korea is such a non-solvable problem is is because China's like it, it's really just about the big players like worrying about how the world's being divided. Like you got China, oh, no, Trump, Russia, Trump's getting the and Nobel Peace Prize. US. What are you talking about? He, he I mean, cured Korea. You didn't hear this shit. I'm saying China does not want any excuse for more China. U.S. troops and military bases to be in their in their vibe. You know, it's like a big game at the end of the day, like on the world stage. It is. It's, it's a it's game the, of nukes. Oh, that's what we should call the episode. It's a, game a game of, of nukes. nukes. You play nuke, to win nuke, or nuke, to nuke, not nuke, get nuke, blown nuke, up. Nuke, 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 boom, 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 boom. Okay, copyright infringement. Oh just, shit, we did. No, no, we were, that was like five seconds. Fair ah, use. It's we'll, we'll take care of it in post. You guys were out of tune enough. It won't be. It won't be a problem. <laughs> the <laughs> algorithms will be like, going to cut on. it all out. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, that's probably for the best. But, so I think, you know. I think, yeah. Johnny, the reason that's a good question is, is you have to, whenever you're considering, people make quick judgments about things like this all the time. Like, oh, it was definitely wrong because X. It was definitely the right thing because of reason Y. Whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's got to be more complicated you, than that, right? You have to put yourself in those in those shoes, like, legitimately. You can't do it as, like, a thought experiment. Like, you know, like, you, you brought up in the beginning those experiments where you have to, like, push a fat man off of a bridge to move in front of the train. Like, all these kinds of psychological tests. I don't know why you added a bridge. I like it, though, you sadist. Yeah, but also, you, like, for anybody... push a fat man who, off a bridge. That's what the... If, if anyone has oh, is it, uh, no, no. There's I always two heard ver- as a lo- as, there's like no, a there's, switch. There's two versions of it. The v- first version is is a switch. There's a train. There's a train about to hit like f- like five people, and you can you're in the conductor station or whatever. And if you pull a switch, the train diverts and hits one person, but you're directly responsible but for you, that one. Yeah, person you being killed. decided the, that person. Dies. And like I, th- I think it's something like four out of five people like say they would do that. But then when you ask them the same question of if you were standing on a bridge and there was a a fat man like standing like or just like standing on the edge like looking over because he saw this train coming and you could push him and there because there were like five people on the other side of the bridge who couldn't see him like under the bridge and if you pushed him the train would hit him and like clearly like you know 
derail or like he was he's that fat right he's that stop a train yeah (laughs) he's that's why that's why he has to be fat it's like it's not like oh i'm judging fat people it goes down (laughs) to like one in five people say they would physically push somebody to you know save five other people and it's Mm. like well it's the same outcome right but well so this gets down to level of involvement that's why you feel bad when you help invent the nuclear weapon the first nuclear bomb you didn't didn't drop fat man out of the plane but didn't you but But, even and you might even tell yourself but like it was the manhattan project like the government put so much in like they would have found someone else to head it they would have just taken them longer or you know maybe they would have found it someone would have done it anyway well so exactly i think the main point i was trying to make was like that that those psychological experiments that's like one thing, but y- yeah. you can tell yourself, like, as you're thinking through that, you can tell yourself, oh, this is just like a limit case logical example to like figure out the structure of thinking. But when you think to history, you're thinking of something that actually happened and humans who were actually placed in that position. Yeah. There were people who were flying the the B-29 that dropped the bombs B-52, over Japan, no, and they had to actually do it. You know, B fifty twos. It was B fifty twos. Oh, really? What did you say? I think so. What did you say? B twenty nine. But the, I just said a number the, that. Felt is that right. the fake plane uh, Trump tried to sell to somebody? <laughs> no, no. B B twenty nines were main bombers of the war, but I think the B fifty twos had the range. B fifty two is the classic one. That's the Flying Fortress, right? Uh, That's what they were fucking called. Yeah, I think Wikipedia, so. Wikipedia, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't anything. Uh, so, unfortunately, we li- we're we living a fucking millennial age, so the first 20 results are for the cocktail when you search B-52. It's not even the, the band. I was going to say, yeah, why not the band? That's fucked up. So, Joe, right. what about I didn't even you, know if, if you? If you found yourself in the job of of being over over the red button, let's say, and your job was just to sit there, and if you got the right codes from like the nuclear football that apparently follows around the president... Let's say yeah. your job was to confirm those codes are legit, and if they are, you push a button, and the whole point of pushing that button is that there's no turning back. Once that button is pushed, no one can stop what's happening. Would you do it? Would you even well, take I would that do a job? Line, or? I would do a line of coke, first of all. I mean, first and foremost. Every morning? Yes. And then years especially the job, when I got, you're just going to sit there and not get anything. Maybe you'll get a few drills or something. Well, I'll get know. a heart attack after 20 years of snorting coke every morning, for sure, but... Um, no, that's a good question. Like, would you want that job? And like, my answer is like implicitly no, because that sounds like a dumbass job, like in terms of just like, sounds really boring. Well, no, it's, yeah, it's just not what I want to do. Yeah, it's just not what I want to do. But in terms of judgment, like, yeah, I don't want the guy who's chopping off fucking feet in Western Canada to get that job. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's possible. He could lie his way through the so psychology do test. Psychos exist? do that shit all the time. What? Do you think that job should even exist? I think it should exist way more than letting a fucking AI or algorithm do it for sure. Well, I, I trust that. I guess the question I trust the fucking would foot be, shop in yeah. Western Canadian. I'd rather have a socialized crazy person. Yeah. yeah. I don't want fucking that understands like basic game theory. So, yeah, I don't need Tony Stark's fucking AI coming after me. Fuck I, that. I would agree yeah. that that at the level of pushing the actual buttons to make a, a weapon launch, you really don't want thoughtful human beings. You want people who will do their job. The, the place you want really thoughtful... Isn't that human, a robot, though, Luke? The place you would want really thoughtful human beings is at the top of the hierarchy where you're initiating the sequence. Yeah, that's true. That's and a good point. Right yeah. now, it's technically still just the one person, the president. And I really think, at the very least, we don't even have to make it at the level of Congress necessarily, but you have to at least have four human beings who are willing to send the signal down the line. And, and if those four disagree... For whatever reason, it can't happen. That, that could well, be a I good think rule. that's why it's set up the way it is that it goes through those guys. And because, like, the president can call you on the direct line and be hammered and be like, "Fucking nuke him," and you can be like, um, <laughs> "No, you could court martial me for this Thank and God charge Trump me for treason." Drink. But uh, yeah, but <laughs> you know, can right. like, I'm pretty sure the general can be like, uh, "No, sir, like, I have the nuclear football. Like, I'm not giving it to you. You're drunk." I'm like, fuck this guy, arrest him, Guantanamo, he won't give me that nuke. And be like, yeah. and be like, you guys can do that to me, like, Big but, but I'm not letting him launch the nuke. They'll be like, yeah, we're not letting him launch the nuke, but we're going to waterboard you because he's the president. You know, whatever happens, happens. But Fine, fair uh, enough. Fair yeah. enough. But like, I'm, I, I wonder if that's like a built-in failsafe because you got to think they, they planned for that, right? 
I How think to some degree, but the only way nuclear weapons, the like only way deterrence least, works really? is that your lot, enemy or your potential enemy has to really believe that that um, you will do it right, and that's what made the Russia thing. The Stanislav guy that Joe you brought up at the beginning, it was so yeah. unique because he he sort of faced a moment and he should have been the guy who just launches. Because well, if he had been a dumber, less considering guy, like we're talking about, less thoughtful guy, he probably would have, right? Yeah. So the point yeah, if is, he's just, it's if good he's that just more fearful, have, reacting on fear of not wanting to get in trouble. Yeah. Well, Push it. I mean, yeah, but and then consider the opposite. Consider that we were um, launching an attack, and he decided it was fake. In other words, a false negative, right? Or a false positive, whatever, and. Um, Right. He, he decides it's a mistake, but it actually was us launching, and we get the upper hand. You know, in what the end of the world? It's it's so weird because like you're you guys, better off not launching the nukes if the nukes are coming towards you because like wh- like what is gained? Like what are they going to do? Come occupy your country? There is no country. Yeah, you just irradiated the whole fucking thing. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah, like on on an actual warfare. Like there's no reason why though. Like. You, there's no context for ever nuking another nation state. I mean, it doesn't it's a, work. but it's a classic, like, you put your gun down. It's like, no, Unless you first. It's like, what you. do you mean, me first? If I yeah. put my gun down first, you're just going to shoot me. So it's like, oh, let's both put our yeah. guns down at the same time. It's like, well, that's really complicated to do when when it's um, at the level of like, well, also When my guns when, are nukes and they're pointed at your teeth. Yeah, and yeah. also the only way I can know you don't have another gun is if you strip naked. And, like, you don't even trust when I say... It's going to rain tomorrow. You're like, I don't believe that. You're telling me that for a reason because it benefits you somehow. Yeah, you're, you're going just, golfing. Like, you aren't know that, you? that you're talking about that game, the Game of Thrones <laughs> part of it. It's like, yeah, there's just the trust isn't there. Honestly, I how- think I think not enough people when they criticize like people in power. There's of tons of people in power who abuse that power and 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 use it for personal gain. Of course, that exists, but there is the reality that there are certain jobs and i would say president is one of those jobs that that are just so stupidly difficult and you're given mm. no 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 human could could navigate through that in such a perfect way as to not piss somebody off you know or a lot of people off i mean by somebody on the world stage of 7 billion people it means at least millions of people are going to be pissed off at whatever you do well, that's like inherently you look at like presidential approval ratings and it's like, well, yeah, how is it supposed to be a positive approval rating? Half the people didn't vote for you to begin with and right. not all of the people who are on your side agree with how you're doing it. So, And not all the people, yeah, that voted for you even liked you. There's yeah, they just didn't choices. like the other option. And yeah. it's like, but that's part of your point. It's like, yeah, you're, you're in, inherently you're not going to make everybody happy. Yeah, what kind of approval are you going to give to your your least distasteful option? Like, if that's your choosing, yeah. like, well, you're not rating that five stars. You're just not. Fake news. It's fake news. So I, I think that's an important um, just mental experiment is to like, it, it's the fucking, it's the old, uh, what's the book? Um, Chicken in the Bucket. <laughs> oh, wait, that's KFC. Sorry. No, it's... Um, uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. That's the old classic thing is you, you can't understand Boo Radley until you stand on his fucking porch, you know? Who? Boo Radley from the guy To Kill. That, that likes to smother birds, yeah. Yeah, that's like you does. don't know why he's smothering birds, you know what I'm saying? Is he chopping <laughs> off their feet too? You know what that guy's been through, man? What's your what's your conspiracy theory? He's got a that necklace giant? full of fucking crow's feet, like literally. <laughs> does he? I don't know. I don't, I've never met the guy. Who do you think the Western Canadian foot chop? I don't know why I can't get off this. Yeah, you're really fixing Dude, it. Dude, it freaked me out. I was like, why is this just like a headline All I know is that I, I couldn't make up if I tried? I am not going to Western Canada. Like no, you that. shouldn't. Not not as long as you still have two feet on your on your stumps. Yeah, if diabetes <laughs> gets me, then I might make a trip out. <laughs> but, then only, but then and only then. Wait, yeah, so also, I'm just busy. I'll have more time then. Johnny, did you bring Fair a enough. would you rather about nukes? Uh, no, but if you give me like five minutes, I'll just think of one. That's true. All right. I, I, <laughs> uh, I'm initiating sequence. <laughs> okay. There's something else. Oh, yeah. Lightning round. Yeah, Luke, go. nuke Japan. Go do it or don't it. <laughs> in, now? In 2018? <laughs> no. First, 1945. Nuke them or don't? Lightning round. Go. Answer. Um, I'm going to default to don't. Yes or no? 
Don't. Okay. 2018. Nuke them or don't? <laughs> don't. All right. Luke's sticking with it. Joe, Japan. Nuke them or don't? But it's 1938. <laughs> Wait. Like... It's, Joe, yes or no? <laughs> nuke Japan. Go. No. <laughs> All right. So you guys are, are, you just killed are everyone, landing Joe. fairly on the on the no side. Yeah, Joe, you just caused Pearl Harbor. It wouldn't make sense. How do you, you feel about yourself? You just blow up a country with no context. <laughs> that would just be from, terrifying. Just from oh, a Johnny. literary perspective oh, as a I wanna, writer, I can't do it. I want to talk about uranium a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Can we like talk how, about uranium? I like how you said it. I want to talk about uranium a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a little Johnny, bit. speaking of speed round, um, in <laughs> Johnny, you killed your own speed round. I did. Joe, <laughs> let's come up with this on on episode right now. Um, yeah. Last last time with Clouther, we were we were asking like speed questions at the end. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think anybody that comes on Thunk Tank has to. Um, go through like the round. last five minutes or just us going in a circle like you know me johnny joe me johnny and i agree dude. and we just I like totally just agree. berate yeah. with like missiles of of yeah. speed round everything yeah. from would you Give rather me feet have... or chicken feet go yeah you have Every... two seconds everything from like, that i didn't understand yes no, the right? question <laughs> to like Wrong points answer. for not answering yeah. faster yeah yeah it's everything from like the the would you rather no hands no feet to uh, that was one of them <laughs> would you rather have um you know your pinky missing or never get to use a smartphone in your life again <laughs> so much amputation yeah the last two well, minutes <laughs> you know it's a morbid episode talking about the we end did of the get world dark this episode just any Holy kind of question cow. to just like uh, berate with so i think we should we should get used to that Let's it's like a, it. yeah. a, a spinning yeah. machine gun of of rapid fire yeah. questions and they never yeah. know if it's going to be like a would you yeah. rather or if it's going to be right. like uh, Johnny, upside question. down ears or upside down nose? Go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, upside down ears. It, All right, Johnny, I, I you can still Luke walk one. in the rain without drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's like a stipulation of the genie rules? No, because I mean, my nostrils are up and oh. it's raining. I'm going to be <laughs> getting water up my nose or down my nose Why don't you just like, wear a all hat? the time. Think about showering would suck. Oh, that's true. That's a good point. You got to yeah. lean over in the shower. It'd be so uncomfortable. I ask Luke one. If you flip my ears, you know, they're still ears. I can still hear, right? So, it just looks weird. Earlier today, I was watching this video about like that picture of the Kardashian ass that got taken by the um, secret paparazzi. How, how do we move from this? I want to talk. No, about it's fine. I want to talk about uranium. Right, go, go for the uranium ass. thing. We'll talk no, about no, the go, Kardashian no, he's, ass. He's later. in too deep now. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, deep. I gotta hear about the Kardashian <laughs> ass. Finish this point. Not that I want to. I just have to. I'm, I'm assuming it'll come full circle somehow. So go ahead. Well, the, the, literally, the ass comes full circle, but. Usually they have their own paparazzi Ideally. that they hire and then they pretend like, oh, like, look, these people are following us around. And then they take pictures and they Photoshop them to look like perfect. But somebody got a picture of what her ass actually looks like when you don't Photoshop it. And it just looks like somebody like cut her open and shoved like a, a little pillow from a couch in there. It's like gross. It's just like Ooh. like blobs of, of like <clears> – <throat> Oh, does she have implants? Like, yeah, it's she like got fat, fat after she, she got, got them, so they, they've with, like, like moved fat implants or something. What? Yeah, no, that's a thing. In other words, um, the comparison was with J Lo's ass, who is like has a very. Why mis- are we body shaming the Kardashians right now? What what happened here? I, I like how we can only see the the <laughs> microphone filter around Luke's face, and he just looks like he's body shaming people as like an, a, a YouTube internet troll. Because we can see the rest of his his body with a he's beard. He's got his identity hidden. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 and he's uh, just like, yes, the Kardashian yeah. butt is the scourge of society. <laughs> yeah, yes, I mean, Johnny, Batman. I encourage you to go down the uranium <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll save you. Uh, yeah. So there's actually, I was just thinking we'll the other day. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> I was just thinking the other After day. After an awkward all... dive into the Kardashian ass angle, just like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> That's what we If that didn't sell you, nothing will. I can promise you that. Oh, my God. So, uh, I was just thinking, me, before, Johnny. I was just thinking about is all my, the is my crazy mic on? stuff yeah. I know about uranium. All right, good. Like, uh, uh, Marie Curie. Oh, yeah, I've famous. Yeah. She was the one who invented milk, right? <laughs> no, she was married to that guy, wasn't she? Did oh, Edward, Edward, Edward G. Um, milk? Robinson, yeah. <laughs> no, Edward G. Pasteur. Louis he, Pasteur. Oh, that's what I meant. I think she was married to him, wasn't she? <laughs> Why do you assume all the milk scientists were uh, romping together in the 1800s? Well, he, he Mr. Milk, you're guy. crazy. 
You can't get, you can't drink from a cow. <laughs> for what he did. For what Let he me did. pasteurize you, Lady <laughs> Curie. Mr. Milk, you're gonna kill her. <laughs> That's what he did. It was glowing, and then he pasteurized. What it should we her. call this white liquid? We're talking about sex, right? I call it two percent. <laughs> So, anyways, she, uh, in she is a female scientist, <laughs> so she she wasn't really. Oh, oh no, they're gone. <laughs> That's the worst milk porn ever. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't watch that. Side note: <laughs> um, speaking of milk uh, porn, <laughs> she she was a female scientist in the eighteen hundreds. Wait, so speaking of what sheep? What? Speaking of milk she, porn, there's a website she, where girls gargle milk. She was and a female scientist. It. It's called White Milk Power. Yeah. It's, it's kind oh, of... I couldn't hear you, Luke. Sorry. Oh. What were you saying, Luke? I didn't hear anything about the milk. That's why you were laughing. My oh, headphone yeah. popped out. I missed He's it. He's talking about racist milk. Oh. Oh, there's a website where you can buy milk that you pick a girl like based on the picture, and she gargles the milk and then mails it yeah. to you. I think they just sell you milk for 30 If you want to understand why... Oh, no, dude. It's like 60 bucks an ounce. It's like oh insanely God. expensive. If you want to understand why nuclear like weapons exist, white girls. you have to understand weird. humans at the level of milk like gargling websites. Like That's all I don't, part of it. I don't you want know? to. Let's go I back to uranium. I, don't want I the, keep trying the, to talk about right, uranium. Talking about, get to uh, Marie uh, Curie. Milk, what's her name? What? Marie? The, uh, Marie Curie. Yeah, Marie Curie. So like being a female scientist in the 1800s it was, was hard to get credibility though or anything yeah. so Which she went to the fields yeah. she yeah. went to fields that weren't occupied like people knew enough about uranium to be like yeah stay away from that shit it makes you sick and so like no one was really studying it and she's like well, fuck that i'll get into it like science bro yeah and so she did a lot of amazing groundbreaking stuff she's really smart but her notes are 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 like in a museum but they're stored in lead because they're so radioactive because she would just keep samples around that you yeah. can't handle them like you can't leave them out. Like you have to like put a thing on the hand, a suit to handle Did them. Did she die of radiation? Oh, most definitely. I heard but it was milk poisoning. That's weird. Is, is milk poisoning? Ra- irradiated milk. Yeah. <laughs> the milk was bad. Mm-hmm. They tried to it. sell it as Hulk cream, and yeah. uh, it just killed a bunch of farmers. It was. It was. No, but have you guys cream. heard of uranium uh, uranium dials? That was a thing. No, I, uranium, I haven't. In the 50s, there was like, like, radiation is here to help. Atomic bombs will power your baby's milk someday. Like, when those were, <laughs> that was the idea. Can they, you they, introduce the podcast like that for now? Oh, yeah. All I right, can great. definitely do that, guy. Yeah. Uh, but like, you could buy science. The 50s kids newscaster, kids. like, voice. Yeah, that's just, like, perfectly, kid. like, I'm just a. This I'm just, just a, in. I, this if, you're, in. if your bacon consumption is down, you need to smoke more cigarettes to compensate. Brought to you by Philip Morris. More and Levin. It's yeah. like it, it's like a certain like sound quality. Part of it's like the recording equipment they used back then, but it but was. But this voice was also perfect for the time. Yeah, yeah that mid Atlantic accent they were into. Yeah. Yes, we're a city folk, but we also understand the country exists. What town? There's no town that. <laughs> and we're actually, also talking really fast, thing. so as to, to, you know, give you the emotion of how pressing this is. Like it's like I sound <laughs> excited. If if I met you and it was just like, "Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Joe," you'd be like, "Well, that guy's having a stroke." Exactly. That was weird yeah. behavior. <laughs> All right, but so anyways, they just loved uranium. Like, you could buy science <laughs> kits as a kid, like for kids with uranium samples in it. And it's like, yeah, look at all the stuff you could do. You could power light bulbs with it and shit. It's like, ah, uh, yeah, kids shouldn't have that. <laughs> but uh, one thing what they do is they'd make this uranium, I think it was uranium, uh, laced paint. And they would paint watches with it. So your watch would glow in the dark before they had, like, little nice. LEDs. It was a way, because that was a problem. When it was dark, you didn't know what time it was. People don't realize that, that that was a... Yeah. a, a uh, yeah. almost recent problem. Yeah, I've been but so, <laughs> so they, they painted it, but the women in the, the way they, it was a bunch of women in the factory because it's whatever. Uh, it was a painting thing, I guess, but it was a bunch of young women specifically. And when they'd lick the paintbrush before they dipped it in the paint to wet it. And so they ended up ingesting a shitload of uranium and there's pictures of their like jaws all melted off and they all died horribly. Wait, that's when they were this like, was a thing? Yeah, this, and that's when happened? they were like, oh, yeah, maybe uranium shit isn't consumer grade. And they had to pull it, but there was like an initial thing. They're like, it's a new product. We figured out uranium for the masses. <laughs> like, oh, shit, pull that back. You, yeah. need, you need like a permit to. Oh, to we're buy not it. in full out the video game. This is real life. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, you can't just drink Nuka Cola and, and her radiation <laughs> burn goes away. <laughs> Yo, I want to. If Nuka Cola is listening, send us a bottle. Oh, I absolutely would. So at the it. extreme level, I it. guess, like, if, you, if you're around high enough doses of radiation you, your body just stops functioning like that day you get elephant's foot dude but um at, at the lower levels it just, it just kind of either 
depending on the levels, can guarantee you to get cancer or just make the chances that you'll get cancer, like, extremely high. Yeah, it lets the cancer be able to proliferate. I mean, what is cancer? It's, it's you know, bad mutations in it's your, a chain reaction, in your uh, like DNA nukes. strands. And that's exactly what ionizing Whoa. radiation will do, you know? Yeah. That's fucked up, man. So, so I think Joe, you never answered I, I, though. Would you push that button, or would you just never put yourself in the position of having that job? Um, I, I, I definitely wouldn't push the button. In 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 the context of like, it's just a broad hypothetical. Like, yeah, I wouldn't push a button to nuke a bunch of people, yeah. and that pro- probably means I'm shitty at that job. But like, I, you know, also like again that that example we gave earlier, Stanislaw or whatever the fuck that that guy's name is like. Him, him being shitty at his job made him like one of the better influences as a human of the 20th century. That's what I mean. Right? Like one of the most important people, incidentally, of the 20th century. Right. Because if he if he if he had just followed orders, like you said, like a robot and like thought about it at like the most base level of like, here's the signal. Like, let's do this. You know, yeah, it's a totally note, different I'll, reality. I'll, uh, maybe I'll try to remember to put a link to the radio lab episode. They did a really cool episode about um, this very topic of, of nuclear deterrence. And sweet this guy in the U.S. military who started asking questions. He basically started like asking up his chain of command from his job, like, well, what what about the case where, you know, blah, 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 what about, th-? and they were like, you're asking too many questions. And eventually it got reported like high up the chain of command to the point where like, like it became this big thing. And I forgot the details, but it was a really good episode. And they talked about like just how crazy mutually assured destruction is. It's like, on the one hand, it makes sense. But on the other hand, it's like, yeah. It's like the whole point is like they know we're going to launch. But then if they're yeah. launching, why would we launch? You know I know, but I know you know and you know I know you know. Isn't it and just I a big you chess know, game? I know, so, you know? Yeah, well well that's the thing. It's like on a practical level, it's like yeah, like you look at the world wars, like those are terrifying wars. Like so many fucking people died in those wars and it's like how many people from those nation state players like you think of like the worst like pl- players that like lost the most people and killed the most people in World War II, like Germany, like any country in Europe, Japan, America. It took Poland thirty how, years. To how get their how many of those? How though. many soldiers have those countries lost or civilians from warfare and the, since the, the World War II? Like most of the deaths from warfare have been like internal conflicts, like internal genocides. You know, like Darfur, think, all I that think, shit. I think it's happening. This I, I don't know where I heard this, but it's happening in the next decade where the number of deaths by like suicide is going to outpace deaths by homicides oh that's interesting like, like where in america or I general think globally yeah, i wonder what it is it in might america. just be wherever this person was looking yeah. at numbers globally you know i don't, I I don't know what the stats that. would be exactly but, but i would say shocking theoretically we'll get to that point right yeah. i would say a lot of people but would say maybe, that uh, that um uh, that excuse me. bless you in the absence okay. of like conflict against the other that 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 some darkness inside humans tends to like emerge somehow, you know, or like yeah, like a complacency which like might lead to like a darkness, right? Where it's like, oh, because that, that's like that ties into evolution and how you always kind of want to be on the awareness of trying to outcompete whoever your competitors may or may not be, right? Because if you don't they might outcompete you and then you're, you're done, you're dead, whatever. So it's like, if that goes away, if that's missing on an individual level, yeah. thinking you about You know what that makes me think of, in, Joe? I used to play like, you know, soccer and lacrosse and like, Johnny, you used to play Russian football roulette. a bit. Like yeah. you would get the people that, um, sports were like part of their life, but it wasn't the whole thing. And then you would see the kind of people where sports were like their identity. They like that's well, where they found their first voice dude, that's a, feeling like a that's person. That's a great point, and, yeah. And then when the season ends, even if you win the championship, let's say you you go all the way and win the state championship as far as you can go, when it ends, there's that empty feeling of like, what the fuck is next? Well, it's short lived, right? It's like I see this with people who are way too into professional sports too, where like I have friends and it's like their team won the championship last year and immediately 
they, like their victory is so short lived. It's it's the parade that weekend, and then they're already thinking to all right, how are we gonna retool for next season? Who are we keeping? Who are we bringing in? Who's who are we drafting up? Yeah, and that's never that, that that's across the board. It's it's like yeah, it's never like one time is is good enough. You're always prepping for the next round to to keep building this psychotic legacy that will only be as big as you can always keep winning, which you will never be able to do, right? Well, because it's like gambling. It's the losing that gets you addicted. Because if you won every time, it would get boring. It's because you keep losing and losing, and then when you win, you're like, yes! And then you have to try to win again, and then you lose, you're like, fuck, I gotta well, that's keep what I mean. going until I you win w- again. If you won gambling, and you won, like, doing the next 15, like, say you won gambling, you won, like, $500 billion, like, an obscene amount of money, like, an impossible amount of money, like, would you stop gambling if you had been gambling to begin with? Right, yeah, if you were like, a real gambler, no, you keep going. I would. Fuck it. So I think but I it's think like that's the Twilight Zone somewhat what's the happening on the winning. level. I think that's, that's somewhat what is what is happening on the level of like like humans like in general like we're in peacetime for a certain amount of time and then I think people tend to like freak out a little bit like they, yeah they but, start chopping off feet in Western Canada. So here's the sure. other problem: serial killers the- weren't a thing until like this. 50s, 60s, 70s. I just finished watching Mine Hunters on like Netflix. No, I don't. I don't buy that. I mean, no. I think they didn't get caught. Of course, yeah. they existed to a degree. Of course, but I'm saying like this, this concept of, of knowing killer. about the psychology of like a serial killer and like that. Oh yeah, that's new. Like that's true for sure. They've been around for a while. Where do you think werewolves come from? It's a really good series, Vampires. by the way. If any, Dracula hasn't seen it. Yeah. Big feet. That's, yeah, Dracula. That that was just some guy named Fred in Transylvania that w- was into eating people. Yeah, drinking, drinking wine, people. drinking red wine and eating people. And drinking like, blood out of people's necks yeah. and shit. And like, yeah, that's he definitely thought, He thought it was red wine. And like, right, Johnny, it's I'm going to give you the, uh, the three-minute no, warning. Wonder. I'm going to um, grab my last beer downstairs and come back, and I, I need a would you rather. Okay, but I just had one more thing to say. Uh-huh. Cuz we keep saying like mutually assured destruction in a positive light. Obviously, there's a lot of negative things about it. Like <laughs> the literal the conti- of the connotation of it ends in destruction. Yeah, we're not trying to argue against that. We're just saying that as the starting point. Well, you got some good po- some upsides yeah, to it. Fair but enough. The one thing is what if this like extended peace between major players is like a, uh, you know, a forest going too long without a forest fire. Like you get so mm. much dense undergrowth and then the you get a bad thing drought. Just goes up. Yeah, you lose the yeah. whole thing rather than a brush fry- fire just exactly. coming through. control burns. You know, you know, like a normal pro- like you've disrupted the normal the yeah. way it normally goes whether that's good or bad. Like there's a long term effect then. Dude, think so. about what a virus does to your body. It heats you up until it burns itself out. Well, isn't that why they called it the powder keg in World War One? Like think tension built up to a yeah. point where it's like, well, now it has to happen. Well, tension right. and like arms and ambitions and all that shit. Pride, it all ties together, dude. Well, because co- colonialism, like th- they had colonized <laughs> the whole the whole planet pretty much by then. You know, yeah, it was all divided up. So they're like, well, now I gotta take. It's like in Risk, where once you take up take the, the free spaces, you, you know, you, you go after your friends. All right, Don't I'm going to grab Wakanda that last beer. Wakanda. I'll be back in a second. All right. So we got to come up with a good would you rather. All right, let's do that while he's gone. All right. That, that fucker um, chopping off pig feet. I feel like I Canada. opened with the would you rather. Would you rather bomb Japan or invade with ground troops? That was my would you rather. Yeah, but that's not funny. That's weird. They don't dark. all have to be funny. I, I want to be them to, thoughtful. Dude, too. this episode has been so heavy. It's can, so dark. Can yeah. we can we get into something ridiculous? I've tried. I've tried to say some ridiculous things. It's tough though. I'm really putting my, to... I would put my best foot forward, but it's on the a beach in Western Canada, so I, I really can't. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, your your major attempt though has been like <laughs> severed foot humor, which <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what, what why I derailed on it's this. It's just not that upbeat. Like if you're trying to swing <laughs> things around, mood. yeah, it's an odd. <laughs> Choice. I don't it's even know if my choice. mic is on. I don't even know if I'm recording. I'm having a blast. Oh, I'm having a great time, but yeah. uh, we we still need a that get it a us. blast. Uh, <laughs> that was like I was watching uh, this YouTube video, and it was about this guy Phineas Gage. You know this fucker? Was he the around the world in eighty days guy? Not even close. Oh, that's Although he was a, he was a guy in like the late eighteen hundreds or something, whatever. And did he invent railroads or something? He did work on a railroad, and in fact, <laughs> he would tamp. I think I do know his he, name. He would tamp the um, explosives down to like blow up. Whatever. Oh, I know who you're talking. Yeah. About. yeah. So like he was tamping it down with this iron rod that happened to be shaped like a spear. And the something he lit a spark and it lit the fuse and the fucking rod shot through his face, and he 
survived like he went home and like he was fucked up like he had problems the rest of, like he lived like another 10 years i think and eventually died of like epileptic seizures because he had a hole through his brain but he survived for like a good didn't he have like rage issues and mood problems too after oh that? yeah for sure it was just like the first case study of like a guy like he it, friends who they could interview and be like he was one way before and now he's yeah different. no know? totally they immediately said that but the funny thing is is that on the youtube video i commented because uh, the the bolt went through his eye and through his brain, and I said, "Yeah, re- great video, really eye popping stuff." Well, at least for Phineas, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> and like, I got one like on the comment. That's pretty good in the, in the savage world of YouTube comments. Some of them are uh, one of my f- favorite things is just watch a really great YouTube video and then just go through the comments and watch the fucking Mad Max slaughter that is YouTube comment sections. No matter it's how pretty epic, the, it's like one. I, I know we shouldn't be saying this in a YouTube video, but it's like one of the worst places on the internet. I don't, I don't give a fuck so, what YouTube so, thinks about my comments so, on their channel. No matter oh, how beautiful do. the video is, like, it could be, like, the most precious video of, like, a dog greeting a soldier, like, on its way home from Afghanistan when he oh. finally makes it yeah. and the dog yeah. remembers him and licks his face. Somebody will comment on that video and say, that guy's a piece of shit. You yeah. know? Or they'll be like, yeah, I'd let that dog lick my balls. And it's yeah. like, why are you saying that? Well, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. like that, that, yeah, like that breed shouldn't be owned. They should all get put down. Like, it's just something horrible. It's like, dude, that's not what's happening. So out of context <laughs> like, for what the are you situation. About? Yeah. Now, the well, question why, is, like, to what degree are those actually trolls? And if they're trolls, on, on the one hand, it's like, okay, at least that person hard? doesn't actually no. exist. But the troll exists. So somebody exists who wants to make you think that that exists. Like, that's kind of even worse in a way. Hmm. Like somebody, See, I troll, I, somebody I troll nicely though. who you doesn't actually nicely. think those That's things, but just Jeffrey. wants to like inject the world with those kinds of thought viruses, like to comment yeah. on cute dog videos and say like, you know, yeah, what's your deal, dude? All dogs should die. Or, like, it's it's like they're just trying to start wow. some negativity yeah. somewhere. Or like some random racist shit. Yeah, they shouldn't even let those people have the dogs. Do you it's know, like what? Like, do you know what it reminds what are you me of? About? Yeah. Like, there's a, yeah, there's it's a, a weird place. There's a great George Carlin video. I'll, I'll definitely link this in the description because it's about. <laughs> We've got like eight links in our description. Yeah, Joe, oh, I have Joe, a release date. Why? Why no, definitely there? More. Are you tagging something? Uh, in I your... saw this curb alert for a really great fridge <laughs> in uh, like share and subscribe uh, out in a uh, Gatlinburg. I don't even live there, but it's just a really good deal. So we're gonna, Gatlinburg we're gonna isn't even a real place. No, it is not. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna link it. We're gonna link that too. Anyway, so there's this George Carlin video, and he talks. About, you've definitely seen the video, Johnny. I don't know if you have Luke, but he talks about how um, whenever he sees a news report where you have the reporter, you know, and they're they're out wherever, and it's all panicky, and they're talking about how there's a storm and tornadoes, and several houses have already been destroyed, and George Carlin says something along the lines of like. Yeah, I always kind of want it to be a little bit worse. Right. You know, really see like what happens if you ramp it up to dial 11. And he just goes into this whole thing about like, yeah, fuck them. They're not real people to me. Like, yeah. embrace the chaos. And he, he, his point is that that exists in all of us. And some of us are just more aware of it or like more oblivious to it or try to deny it. Right. But his, his point is that it's there evolutionary, like underneath the there's, layers. There's that a we've combination built up. of. Of how much is it in you and how aware of it you are. It's I think a Venn so, diagram yeah. right. there, and yeah. where the the middle is, is George Carlin is no, it's how you end up like acting. You know, so but I I would he just he's the one drawing it. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he's the yeah kindergartner drawing Venn diagram. right. Who's trying to explain it, and they're like, you can't say fuck, you're a kindergartner, and he's like, fuck you, I'm George Carlin, <laughs> I'm George Carlin. Joe, my answer to that oh, would be, like that. and it fits perfectly with this theme of like like nuclear weapons, which like force you to think about your morality on the level of like how it affects everyone. You know, most yeah. of the day, like the the decisions you make, you you don't sort of see how they're going to affect like a large amount of people. It's like okay, I could do something yeah. today that affects you know a few people, but I'm not going to do something today that's going All right, to. Luke, would you rather? You set me up perfectly. <laughs> Would you rather, if you ever have sex again for the rest of your life, you will cause a nuclear explosion? <laughs> what does that mean? Like a megaton, Where? gigantic Where? hydrogen yeah. bomb, wherever you are. <laughs> Wait, so he dies? He yeah. vaporizes? Horribly. Wait, so he can only have sex one time in the rest of his life? If yeah. he really wants to. <laughs> yeah, you can do it one more time. That's a very... Um... 
specific life ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> life journey. <laughs> That's all I would you rather. That's just a, how long do you think you can now, last? Can I just get a genie detail <laughs> clarification? Yeah, you can jerk off. That's fine. <laughs> and and you can't in have the, sex, in the sex with another part, person. Is it the sex or is it orgasming in sex? <laughs> he has a good point. Yeah, no, you, you can't have anyone help you orgasm. But when does it, has it start? to be all just self. What How about does it like, initiate? What about what phone are the initiation sex? rules? Hmm, no, that's okay. Oh, <laughs> what about Skype sex? <laughs> that's fine. As long as you're the only one like touching yourself, you what can't if, what if physically I have, like, have a... sex with anyone else. Though. What about what those like, like Bluetooth like vibrator things? Yeah, right. Like no, that's fine. As long as you're not. What if I'm in the room with them, but they're not actually touching me? That's fine. What Luke's saying is no, because that's the same as like what if holding they use a sex the, toy. The Bluetooth weird man, sex toy so no. he's talking about on yeah. me. No, that's, that's no not good. Allowed. No, what? But that's no. plastic to me. Contact. I know, but it's no, it's uh, it's external stimulation. That's okay, what the Joe, is. I have a question then for you. No, it's human. You external. asked for genie. It's genie exohuman plan. external stimulation. Yeah, any, that's any your problem. External. Okay, I, I got all you. All be self. Yeah, no, that makes fucking sense. Yeah, self-inflicted pleasure only. That's for the rest of your life, or causes a massive nuclear explosion. A yeah. gigantic one. So, Huge. Joe, my Mil- question million, would be... Millions of dead people. There's an or to this, would you rather? Oh, that was yet. just the one? That's the... <laughs> oh, would you rather was the would you rather. or that? Yeah, there's I assume that somewhere in that mess of things you just Jesus. told me was a would you or rather. But... <laughs> that's what I assumed <laughs> no. too, Luke. No, that's it first, is if you ever have sex again, you cause a giant... You turn into a giant nuclear bomb that goes off. Damn. Yeah. Or... Uh, you have to hit a button. Nothing else happens to you. You get to go and live your life normally. But a nuclear bomb is going to go off somewhere and kill a million people. No, Nobody you know, though. But a million people will die. And you can go have sex and do whatever. And no one knows you hit the button but you. That's pretty good, right? That's a good one. I think that's one of your best ones yet, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. You just nuked my mind, dude. Yeah. Well, well it's, genie. It's the smoked alt beer. It's really, it's really light Ooh. in the smoke. Yeah. Heavy on the question, light on the smoke. That's Thunk Tank Podcast. That's, the, that's Thunk Tank Podcast. Strong, ladies and gentlemen. Like, um, share, and subscribe. So I'm going to let get that... Get your bunkers today at Uncle Willie's Bunker Bond. I'm Radiation gonna let free that since 1993. A that's second. a heavy one. Yeah. But I will say this. My phone just told me that my battery was at 10%. So if I win the hang-up game in the next 10 minutes... It's, it might be accidental. In like a brilliant way where like you really didn't see it coming. It may yeah, it was, it, it was may incidental. look like I practiced this for two weeks or something, but it, it could just be like... the. I think lo- you did. I think you've been timing how fast your battery dies. <laughs> he would do that. You got a, you got a totally giant like 24 style clock on the wall <laughs> that is just... Is, and you're like, I'm going to yeah, nail I can it see this that time. All the, all, the, all the test runs are going to be Genie won't let it. me have sex without nukes. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid fucking genie. Freaking asshole. <laughs> Show him. Um, yeah, no, the genie... You guys intrigue the genie with your, uh, you know talking about nuclear weapons so yeah we unleashed the genie the ultimate nuke nuke dude we fucked up we set ourselves up um, he got yeah, us. the only thing more scary than nukes or genies isn't genies with nukes <laughs> now that's a script you should No, write. i'm more that afraid of nukes with genies because oh i don't God. know how like that you works. rub a nuke and then like a, a soviet genie comes out and he goes <laughs> hello <laughs> what does he say then johnny where are beats <laughs> you're like i don't know soviet genie i wasn't uh, expecting that i, don't know. I didn't know he was you must give genie beats or he eats children where are children they make <laughs> oh shit i i should have got beats i guess like there's some kids nearby they're not mine go for it like i'll be back with beats yes yes eight kids come back with beats <laughs> but you're not gonna nuke anybody great yeah and then and then you get like wishes or something but you gotta like you know give him a shoe i don't know how their system works <laughs> <laughs> you, wait, you Some don't, Soviet Johnny. You don't, you don't know the Soviet nuke genie bylaws, really? As a genie, that you uh, didn't that's cover not that my jurisdiction. College? If really? you if, wow. if you uh, think about it, I've I've never I, actually. I, I'll make a, a, a. I'll admit right here. I've never actually been to Russia before. Ever, so, <laughs> ever in all your genie <laughs> travels. All my genie travels. I'll admit it. I'll really admit it. Like it's, it's not my jurisdiction. To admit. Wow. Wow. So you Johnny, just outsource all um, that. Okay. Yeah. last episode we we explained your absence by saying you are at a, like a genie training seminar. I think. Yeah, that is what we said. Oh, like in the intro. I think that's what I was actually doing. I'm trying to think where I was. I think you were. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. 
So I would choose the one where my own at a bar. willpower, um, <laughs> like I just have to not have sex and then nobody dies from nukes, right? I mean, that's the most ethical choice is to just be like a monk. Yeah, I would, I would, I would probably. Too. I mean, that's the reasonable option. Do something like that when monkish. you break it down. Because you gotta think about it, man. Like, if you just become a depressed drunk, get in a bar fight, go to jail, and some your cellmate has sex with you, boom, nuclear explosion. Yeah, you you can't get you can't get any yeah, kind of sexual. Yeah, you can You can't even unwanted sex will still cause it. So yeah, you kind of gotta be careful. That off. Yeah. You gotta be careful in the lifestyle you choose. Yeah, because you may get so hammered. What about you're a like, hug? Fuck this genie. Fuck these people. Huh? What if you get roofied and taken advantage of, and then that person causes, you know, a giant problem for a lot of people? Wait, but it's every time, so it's like, oh no, you go off too, so you can only, you die too. You wouldn't even know; you would just die. That was the rule. No, you know, you probably like get super bright, like you know, <laughs> like in a, in a movie, you go ah, like Doctor Manhattan style. Yeah, like Doctor Manhattan shit. style. Yeah, you start glowing. You're like, fuck, I'm gonna blow up now. And yeah, I guess you don't feel it because you explode. But like, like, so you go from roofie to nuke fuck in like three you hit, seconds. You hit critical mass. Jesus so, Christ, dude, that's, that's how, heavy. Yeah, however that happens. You know how it actually happens in 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 nuclear weapons? Um, they have like a a sphere of uranium. And then they have a cone shape of uranium sitting here on a trigger. Luke's jerking off his hand if you can't like see, ladies and gentlemen. Cone. And so when Say the, cone again. When the nuclear bomb actually detonates, <laughs> it shoves the uranium cone into the um, core, sphere. the sphere of uranium. And that triggers the fission to start. And it's a critical mass where enough neutrons get released each time they split atoms that it keeps <clears throat> running into enough other atoms to, to make fucked. a chain yep. reaction. And while Luke's saying this, he's wearing a pony outfit, but just the top half and nothing else. Just so everyone <laughs> like share and subscribe. Go ahead, Luke. Yeah, I like spinners. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the Kardashians would get them, but I think this Ooh, will do it. Joe, yeah, that, that if you say it in the way you just said it all the time, it sounded like somebody said, you're listening to NPR news. Like, <laughs> As opposed to as opposed to most of the time where I'm like like share sure, subscribe. You also try to say it like in the, those dull moments where it's like should we abandon that like line of thought and just go on with a new one? You just kind of it like input Weasel there in. in that little yeah. space like that corner where it changes direction. You're like like share and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, you know what are you gonna do? You know what's a nuclear like weapon that does get used that I wanted to get to is spent uranium bullets. Do you know oh, what that the, is? Like the pellets that they use? They take they make bullets out of old your old like spent uranium from like nuclear it's literally nuclear waste from reactors. Oh, this and category it's because, so sad. It's because there's uh you know, there's tanks and stuff. Such that clever are, ways to fuck with fuck with people and kill them and yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And, like there there's uh tanks that like the armor is just too thick, like a foot and a half thick, like reinforced steel, whatever. Like you just can't shoot a rocket big enough to yeah. like, you know, pierce it, or that's not like cost prohibitive, you know. Um, but so these spent uranium. uranium rounds are just so dense, like Luke was saying. Like they just have such a pack of, and they're so hot that when you shoot them, they just tear through metal. They literally melt through these like nuke-proof tanks. Yeah, and uh, because they are blast-proof nukes. tanks. And that is a nuclear weapon that's used, which is really bad because when you shoot one of those bullets into the ground, you're like salting the earth there. You know, if right. you if you light up outside of a village fighting some guys and shoot a hundred, a couple hundred rounds, like it's a hundred couple bits of nuclear waste you just added to the countryside and the ecosystem and everything. So that's like a really bad one that that does get used sometimes. Hey, you guys mentioned the Tech. big SAR like weapon in the beginning. You said we'll get to it, but then we never got to it. Oh, SAR bomba. SAR bomba. Yeah. Yeah, it's the biggest nuke ever I think detonated. Yeah, it was a test nuke by the Soviets and I think it was uh, it was scaled to be like a 100 um Oh shit. That's fucked up. I was actually setting them up to start talking about this and I was going to hang up in the middle of their rant. But instead my plan got reversed back on me. Shit. So I guess you'll be hearing me first. You'll be hearing them second. They'll probably be like, oh, like he didn't have any idea. He's such an idiot. I was two levels deeper than them and then just had too much beer to figure it, 
figure out how to fucking implement my plan, but I had a plan. Anyways, fuck. All right, thanks for uh, listening. We didn't talk much about nukes, but um, when do we ever really talk about the topic that we actually choose? It's just sort of a, a starting off point. It's like a blooming of some kind of a topic, and then you kind of see where it launches you and, and just wander around. Um, fuck you guys. Peace. Uh, he's dead. We nuked him. He's never going to hear it. It's over. That's the whole point. He can't listen to this. No, ours go. We won though, so he can listen to it when he listens to the episode, like everyone else. Well, I mean, he's gonna edit it, so he's gonna listen to all. No, I'm gonna edit this one, so he has to wait for it to get released <laughs> because he lost. That's mad for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to stick with the theme of the episode. Fuck. But finish bomb, sorry, uh, Zar Bomba. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead. So the Zar Bomba, I, I think it was scaled to be at like a hundred. I always forget the the tonnage. Um, order of magnitude i think it was 100 kilotons yeah like a 100 kiloton explosion which is like in like Insane. they still measure that's all based on me- measurements of like tnt i think yeah it's like oh it's a thousand like kilo whatever of tnt or whatever because that, like that's how they originally measured explosions when they first started blowing shit up in civil war days or you know whatever the 1800s it was like oh yeah it's this many tons of tnt and then when they had conventional bombs, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just this order of magnitude of that, 10 times what that was, and you just keep scaling it. So, like, the Tsar Bomba was, like, 100 kilotons or whatever. And they actually had to scale it down to 50 because they were worried that it might destroy the planet. Crazy. And they still detonated it on some remote fucking island in the middle of nowhere in northern Russia. And I think it went, like, 40 no, miles. I don't think it ever was detonated. Yeah, it was. There's a video of it. YouTube it. Oh, you're right. It's the largest explosion. Yeah, it's okay, insane. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it went like I 40 actually... miles into the atmosphere, and I forget how much like, energy it released, but that was the last, like, biggest one that they tested because they realized, oh, yeah, no, we can just end the world at any point now. Clearly. Like, all right, all right. Let's, let's, let's chill. Maybe they were trying to just, like, heat up Siberia. That's why they did it. Like, well, you have the whole tropical, tropical, really enough new really mammoth global warming Russian cloning theory. It's it's not a theory. It's documented. <laughs> well, that's 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 a challenge for another episode for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I think we covered a lot. I, this episode was too dark for me, though. It was really dark. I mean, we talked a lot about like vaporization and people being nuked to make that happen. Yeah. Maybe we should save this one. No, for, I think we should air it. Patreon immediately <laughs> only for people no, that people. actually like her shit. Nobody likes her shit. Actually, no, I got two new pe- fans at the bar today. That's I hope, true. I hope, I hope you're listening. Fans That's of the true. Bar. Fa- shout out to the fan- new fans. Fan shout out to new fans. If if you're you, you know who you are. That's true. Yeah, I didn't mean, see that one know we're talking to you. Yeah, they they knew who <laughs> we were talking to. But we're gonna have some good episodes coming up. It's May sixteenth, twenty eighteen. Fuck! Now we have to air it. God, Tw- what? But that's isn't, like isn't, two years ago. <laughs> no, I said 2018. Ago? You said 2016. I think. No, I said 2018, but I also said May 18th. I don't know what day it is. It's not May 18th. It's not. It's not okay. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, but we can try to. We can try to get it done. <laughs> I guess. You know, I'll call some people and see if I can make that date yeah. happen. We have some good episodes coming up, though, right? Yeah, uh, we still got a uh, in-depth beer episode. We got some interviews coming. We got some uh, really good channel. Really good guests some, coming. With uh, some craft beer people. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get a whole craft beer segment thing going. We'll also have some, some artists, some scientists, some other ists. Yeah, a lot it's of really ists. hard to say ist. Ists, plural. Ists, ists, what about the really. ists that they own? Like if they own something. Ists, ists, it's Dicey's. No, like wait. the scientists. Scientostis? No. No, that's a disease. That's a terrible debilitating disease. Sci- yeah, it's when you lose your feet in Western Canada. <laughs> you, you lose your feet to a, a crazed man obsessed with crazy global domination. Nuclear button pushing man. It's a sonically discharged uh, guy. <laughs> yeah. Just. I mean, if you're going to be discharged, you might as well do it dishonorable. He's got like a lot of hacksaws, right. but you know what? I, he like, doesn't do any carpentry. Do you have any that. hacksaws? Yeah, I got a couple. Really? Yeah. I don't have any hacksaws. I got well, my hacksaw game. You know, how many feet you got? <laughs> Too many. Single or double digits? Uh, enough. Definitely enough feet. That's a weird way to ask if someone has one foot or not, isn't it? Do you have single or double digits of feet? <laughs> well, you should. Because if they say double digits and it's three, that's really unlikely. But double digits of feet is 
And then you are also setting that. yourself up they can be like neither, which then you th- know it's like so they either have three feet or they have no feet. And now if I look down, I'm a dick if it's none. And if I, you know, if it's three. <laughs> I'll keep talking. I really should have hung up on Luke for this. Uh, this wasn't the clever. I, he's never going to hear this. Scott, it we, we hung up, nuked him. Yeah, no, he's done. He's uh, yeah. ba- ba- uh Zara Bomba. He's really pissed right now too. He's in so in his bullshit exit. He was like yeah. before oh, ours. Yeah, he was like he's definitely like I'm gonna get him. They're together, hanging out. Like yeah. they're gonna be. No, but he's saying right now like, oh, that's not cool. Like you know, they outnumbered me. Yeah, because we've been trying to get you the pa- oh no, we've been killing you the last few episodes. We've hung up on you a lot. Like you were due to hang up on us. I know, and yeah. and I knew he was gonna get me again because you're here. And we're having well, he fun. warned us too, and he and he warned us because but yeah. which it, what, whatever. All right, so we have a hang up game if you're if you haven't if this is your first episode because we, somebody has to hang up just like somebody has to launch the nukes, right? Yeah, someone's someone's got to shoot first, you know. Yeah, and uh, so. The winner gets their yeah. message. Well, if this is your first time joining us, thank you very much. Again, it's usually pretty light. I don't know why we settled on nukes this episode, but we, we dive into weird random topics like that, and then we drink and we see what happens. But I think we covered a pretty interesting philosophical uh, spread of you know yeah, also, beer and good stuff. Also, the single cut IPA we drank, too. Oh, shout out to Single Cut. We forgot to mention this. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, they're double dry hopped Imperial IPA. Oh, man, it's an Imperial. That's why I started getting weird with the nuclear stuff. All right. Fair enough. Uh, it was delicious and juicy, flavorful yeah. beer. All right. I think we're pretty beard. I think uh, we're pretty beard. Let's grab a beer, though. We're, we're All right, so uh, we'll so see you next week, and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Bye-bye. guys. Bye.